They were good? Yep. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call to order this meeting of the 1st of December 2022 City of Nashua Planning Board. Can we get a roll call, please? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mayor Donches. Mike Peterson. Here. Scott LeClaire. Here. Adam Varley. Here. Maggie Harper here. Patricia Clay. Here. Dan Hudson. Here. Bob Bollinger. Larry Hirsch. Here. Mark Meehan. Derek Tebow. Okay, so we have a quorum. We're going to keep moving on with the agenda here tonight. Uh, next up on the agenda is uh, we have some minutes in our packet from the meeting on November 17th, 2022. Has anybody from the board had a chance to review those minutes and want to make a motion as to whether they're ready for us to accept as written or need amendments? Alderman Clee? I'll make a, a motion to um, accept the minutes as written. Okay, so we have that motion by Alderman Clee to accept the 17th of November 2022 minutes as written. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Hirsch. Any further discussion by the board? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? One abstention, Aye. so that motion passes. Okay. All right, uh, communications. Good evening, Mr. Chair and fellow members of the planning board. Uh, the following communications came through to you after the packet was mailed out. Uh, case A220039, uh, Merrick Parkway. We have an email from Catherine Hirsch, November 28th, 2022. Uh, we have an email from Rabbi Savat, November 30th, 2022. Uh, a letter from Catherine Hirsch on November 29th, 2022. Uh, also an additional letter from Attorney Proman, November 29th, 2022. And we have a letter from Paul Chisholm, engineer, for Parkway, November 29th, 2022. Uh, the second case, uh, 66 Canal Street, A220226. We have a TIR worksheet from Maynard and Paquette, dated November 23rd, 2022. Uh, we have a letter from Joe Mandola, engineering comments, November 30th, 2022. Uh, 14V Railroad Square, A220240, uh, an email from James Ryan and engineering comments from Joe Mandola. Final case, A220227, 60 Lund Street. Uh, November 30th, 2022, Joe Mandola, engineering comments. And November 23rd, 2022, Mark Rapaglia, fire comments. And an updated plan as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read the procedure of the meeting here. So the procedure of the meeting and hearings are gonna be as follows. After each legal notice of each conditional special use permit, site plan, or subdivision is read by myself, the board will first determine if the application is complete and ready for us to take jurisdiction. If we do take jurisdiction, the public hearing will begin. This is a time for the applicant or their representative to uh, present an overview and a description of their project. They'll speak to the um, whether or not they agree with the recommended staff stipulations and the board will have an opportunity to ask relevant follow-up questions of the applicant or staff. I'll next ask for testimony from the audience. First, I'll wish for anybody wishing to speak in opposition or concern to a plan. Um, if you desire, please come forward to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. This will be your time to express your concerns or ask questions you have regarding the plan. Next, I'll ask from uh, for testimony for anyone wishing to speak in favor of a plan. Um, the board will then ask any relevant follow-up questions of the applicant, and then the applicant will be given a rebuttal period at which time they can speak to any of the concerns raised by the public testimony. After this is completed, uh, the public hearing will end. The board will resume a public meeting, at which time we'll deliberate and vote on the application before us. I'd ask that everyone keep their remarks to the subjects at hand and to not repeat what has already been said. The board wants to be fair to everyone and make the best possible decision based on the testimony presented and considering all of the applicable approval criteria established in the national revised ordinances for our conditional special use permits, site plans, and subdivision plans. 
I thank everyone for their interest and their attention. I'd ask you if you do have a cell phone, please go ahead and turn it off or put it on vibrate at this time. Okay. Um, before we get into the agenda, was there any um, reports from any committees or anything from many of the board members? Um, yes, for the HDC, we okay. had a meeting this past Monday. Mm -hmm. There was one case for Five Abbott Street, which is a historical society. Uh, they were requesting to put up some screening and a roof over their um, HVAC equipment in the back, and that was approved. Okay, thanks. Anything else? Oh. All right. All right, moving on. Um, old business conditional special use permits. There are none. Uh, old Business Subdivision Plan, A21-0299, that's 145 Temple Street. Um, that particular uh, application has been tabled until January 19th meeting of 2023. Um, as are cases A21-0300, A21-0301, and A21-0302, which are all um, from the same applicant and um, same site. Um, Next up, um, I'm going to go a little bit out of order on the agenda as published here. Um, I'm going to take new business conditional special use permit. This is going to be case number A22-0226, lead Kahlo owner. This is an application and acceptance of a proposed conditional use permit to change from a laundromat in one residential unit to a restaurant in a residential unit. Property is located at 66 Canal Street. For the board, has anybody had a chance to take a look at this application and want to make a motion as to whether it's ready for us to take jurisdiction? Ms. Harper? Uh, yes, I'd like to make a motion to take jurisdiction of case A22 0226. All right, so we have that motion by Ms. Harper to take jurisdiction of A22 0226. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Peterson. Any further discussion by the board? All those in favor of taking jurisdiction? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. That motion passes. We have jurisdiction. Mr. Maynard, do you want to go ahead and uh, present Good evening. the applicant? Richard Maynard, professional engineer with Maynard and Parquet, representing the applicant and property owner, Waleed Kahlo. Kahlo. The property of concern is at the corner of Canal and Ferry All Street. It's been there for decades. It's had numerous businesses in it, in it over the years. Uh, and tonight, the business right now is a laundromat on the first floor and an apartment on the second floor. We are keeping the apartment and we're gonna convert the laundromat to a, a pizza shop, a, a pizza restaurant. Uh, there are no changes proposed to the site. Uh, the uh, traffic numbers, as you saw, are, are minimal in this particular site. Uh, with regard to the stipulations, stipulation four, we've never received a letter or comments from uh, the fire department, Rapaglia. We just recently, and I have to strongly object, received a comment letter from engineering four o'clock yesterday afternoon. Uh, that's getting ludicrous. So this, is, this is not professional, it's not reasonable. Uh, and I would ask that the planning board reject that letter out of hand as being out of order. Further to that, that letter contains a number of problems, number of inaccuracies, number of errors. The first item is called, it, it's, in the other thing, it's called comment one parking. Now, parking is not an engineering issue, it's a planning issue, and planning took care of it, and the plan has the proper notes. But Mr. Mandola is trying to impose some kind of other parking ratios on there that don't make any sense and are not accurate or not correct. That comment is totally wrong, totally in error. Uh, in comment number two, he calls for a sewer inspection of the service connection. That service connection's been there for years. He wants us clients to spend money, dig up the street, dig up the site, and inspect the line. It, it, the line is working perfectly. There's no indication that there's any problems with that sewer line. That's an unnecessary burden on my client. And this is no huge business. This is a small little thousand square foot restaurant. You know, 
And so comment two is very unreasonable. Comment three, plan should continue which, which entities currently provide service. The plan shows the thing. This, this is a meaningless comment, it, 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 comment three is. Comment four, plan should confirm that the utilities can support the service. There's no reason not to expect a restaurant to go in there after a laundromat's mats been there. And plus, over the years, over the decades, there's been numerous other uses in here. There's no question there's more than adequate utility service. This is a, another meaningless comment. Now, comment four, will the restaurant use a dumpster? If so, the dumpster location screen should be located. Well, comment four, right now they use trash barrels. And we're going to continue that. They, they, they sit on the side of the building, and if he was over the site, he would have seen that. So that's another comment that says, it doesn't mean anything. The retaining wall the, in, the, in the back parking lot, it's, it's, it's not fragmented. It's, it's beat up and old, but it's fine. It serves its purpose. There's no reason to remove it, repair it, do anything like that. That's another meaningless comment, just to throw a comment out there. Uh, all right, then he's asking about utility lines. I, he, it's obvious, there's no changes to the site. They're just gonna occupy the first floor of the restaurant. There's no, there's no new utilities, no nothing. No, no changes to this particular site. So, comment seven, it's meaningless. Furthermore, it says, do the wires cause a problem for emergency access with the, with the uh, adjacent site? Well, we're not engineering the adjacent site. Stick to our site. There's no problems here. Uh, comment 10, the sign that he's complaining about cites the RSA for the illegal parking that you could get towed away. That's what that site is, and that's all that is there. So the, the, the tow away signs are gonna remain. Comment 11. Now the car wheel stops in front of on the abutting parcels. Again, he wants us to engineer the abutting parcels. That's none of our business. It doesn't belong in here. Uh, comment 13. As I said, the site stays the same. He wants to know if we're gonna put any more signs and things like that. That's not, if it's not on a plan, we're not doing it. This, this comment here is meaningless, it's, it, it, it's superfluous. So, you know, building access points, and we have a front doorway and we have a rear doorway. The front doorway is, uh, this building is grandfathered with regard to handicap ramps and stuff and there's only one unit upstairs and that's been that way for, for decades also. So, the engineering, it meets whatever criteria is necessary. And then the, best one is they want another contribution. Sorry, my client doesn't have a lot of money. My client, for whatever it's worth, is an immigrant. He's not a citizen yet. He's working very hard to make money and pay for his thing and, and start a business. He doesn't have time to be making these donations for other pro causes, so. Uh, we, we're not interested in making that particular uh, donation, uh, and, it, and it's not part of the regs, and, and, and to throw this in a comment letter at the, at the last moment, four o'clock yesterday, you know, this is, this is getting ridiculous, these, these engineering letters. I'm sorry, I have to object. This board should reject this letter totally. It's, it's out of order, it's full of errors, it's inaccurate, and sorry, Mr. Hudson, but you, you gotta, I'll get my turn. You got to do something with this employee with these letters. Yeah, you know? I'll, get, I'll get my turn, don't worry. You know, uh, because I don't mind a good engineering letter because, yeah, it helps me do my job. So, But to get it the night before the meeting full of inaccuracy, errors, and, and, and ridiculous things, no. It's wrong. This board should re reject that letter out hand. Uh, and that concludes my uh, little speech. Okay, thanks. Um, just for my own understanding from you, so if we um, 
decide you need to comply with these letters, are you saying you're not? You what? If, if we're saying that we want to leave, if we decide we want to keep these stipulation for the letter in the, in the. The Mendola letter? The, yeah, exactly. Or are you amenable? I mean, obviously we, we have an option to table it. I wouldn't normally go other. through this tirade. Understood, but the you know, letter, you're you taking our reject, time too, no. so. Mr. Chairman, you should reject the letter. If you guys find something in that letter that has some merit, to, at, talk to me. But otherwise, there's no merit in that letter. That letter should be, it has, has I'll no leave it, I'll business. leave it up to the board, so. Do you have anything else to present, or are you? No, I'm done, yes. Point? Okay. Um, any questions of the applicant by the uh, board? All set, thank you. All right. Uh, anybody, in, so I'll open it up to public comment. Anybody in the audience wishing to speak in opposition or concern or have a question on the plan? Okay, I'm not hearing any. Anybody in the audience wishing to speak in favor of the plan? Okay. Uh, at this point, I'll give it to the board. Uh, Mr. Hudson? You know, I did have a question. Yeah, I'll start with Mr. Hudson. Uh, oh, you have a question for the applicant? Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Peterson. Yep. Mm -hmm. My question for the applicant is, um, with the camera work on the sewer line, would they have to really dig up the street for that, or can they just run it down the, down you, the pipe? No, you have, you have to dig a, dig a trench, a hole, to fit the camera down, and then you send it down towards the line, you know, why, after decades, do we have to be inspecting all, all the sewer connections in the city? You know, but uh, they can't do the inspection from the building itself. They'd have to go out no, to the street. No, you and have dig to do it, it from outside. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Okay. Other questions by the board for the applicant, Mr. Hudson? I don't have <clears throat> I don't have questions, but I'd be happy to go through point by point, Mr. Medall's letter, and provide an alternate view. Sure. Um, yep. So I do apologize for the lateness of the letter. That that's mm -hmm. a legitimate uh, complaint. Mr. Madol does uh, what he can, but um, you know we sometimes these are late, and this one was you know was very late. So I do apologize for that. Uh, in terms of parking, uh, a lot of these comments that you'll find, a lot, uh, the, one of the biggest issues we have um, with this plan, and and often with plans from this applicant. Um, is that they're fairly incomplete. So Mr. Mendola asks a bunch of questions because the clarity is just not provided on the plan. Um, so in terms of parking, <clears throat> um, there's a representation no changes to parking are gonna be made. Uh, there's no stripes on the ground out there. Mm -hmm. The plan shows stripes. So are they gonna be striped or are they not gonna be stripes? Um, the retaining wall uh, that was referenced, I wish I had brought a picture of it because it's, it's, it's horrible. Um, it's broken, it is fragmented, it's almost broken in half. Part of it in the back sticks up. It's between um, the last couple of spots, uh, so it bisects the, the six spots that are uh, drawn on the plan. Um, so Mr. Madol asked a reasonable question about, you know, is that, is that a hazard? Um, we, we want clarity, is that getting removed? I mean, it kind of shows actually on the plan being within the parking spot. Is that being removed, changed? Um, I mean, there's been, uh, uh, a response that is not being changed, and um, we just think that's something the board should consider. Um, the parking, I'm still on common one here, the parking, uh, there was some notes on the plans about parking requirements, uh, but again, there wasn't clarity exactly what the requirements were, and so Mr. Medolo is suggesting the table be reformatted uh, with maxes and mins so that we can have a plan on file that clearly documents what the requirements are and that it falls within that. Mm -hmm. um, plan notes to add, there was this discussion about the uh, sewer service. Uh, we believe it's completely appropriate to look at these services when there's changes of use. Um, <clears throat> yes, it's been a laundromat. Yes, a lot of water's going down the pipe. Um, that doesn't mean that pipe's in good condition. Um, lots of times these things date, date back, you know, 100 years or more. And we believe uh, at that point in time, it's completely reasonable to ask that that be looked at to make sure it's still in serviceable uh, condition. Um, and, you know, digging up the street or not digging up the street, I don't know if what was indicated is factual. 
Uh, lots of times buildings have a clean out and you can get in the clean out and you can do an inspection from there. That may not be the case for this property. Um, we're, not, we're not looking to, uh, to dig up the street related to that, but, but uh, we do. There are technologies you can line services, um, you know, to, to not have to do some of the cutting. Um, but when these uses change, I don't think we should just be eyes closed and not, not take that opportunity to, to ask um, that that be looked at. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, asking what utilities uh, service the plan and whether they're suitable for the proposed use, I don't disagree. It's uh, probably fairly obvious that that's the case, but I don't know why there's a huge objection to noting on a plan or answering the question um, for the record. Um, will the restaurant use a dumpster? It was represented they're going to use trash bills. That's fine. We've got the qu question answered. It wasn't clear from the plan what the answer was or what the proposal was. We've had other sites that have been improved, and then they want a dumpster later. There's no place to put the dumpster, and that's been a problem. So we just want these questions answered up front as part of the application review um, so, so that that can be uh, addressed. Uh, comment 6, I already spoke to the wall. I'm not going to speak to that again. Um, Comment seven, questions about the wires. Uh, he talks about the fact that it's uh, something to do with a neighbor's property. It is true, there's guy wires from a pole on this parcel <clears throat> that cross a window on the adjacent building. Uh, I don't know what that room in that building, maybe, you know, maybe that's not a question that can be answered, but it's a reasonable question to ask, does that prevent a safety hazard? And, you know, because it prohibits egress from the building. Um, does the location, uh, require a handicap spot. That's, a, that's one that he skipped over, and I don't have an answer to that. Um, the plan shows stripe parking. You have the stripes. I talked about that one, comment nine. Mm -hmm. um, Ten, the uh, parking lot has signage. We were simply asking, is that going to stay or, or be removed? It's been answered. Uh, that would remain. I'm, I don't, I, again, it's a simple answer. I don't know why there's such an objection to asking the question and getting an answer. Uh, are wheel stops needed for parking directly in front of the building on an abutting parcel? I'm not asking him to do anything on the abutting parcel. I'm just making sure if a vehicle pulls in, perhaps there should be wheel stops in front of the building so that, you know, if somebody hits the gas instead of the brake um, or, 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 you know, doesn't encroach or park in a way that would, uh, you know, bump into the abutting building. I think it's a reasonable question to ask uh, for a parking lot with parking that, uh, you know, immediately abuts a, 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 parcel, a, a building on an adjacent parcel. Um, uh, we asked a question about, let's see, uh, yeah, the title of the plan, that's fine. Uh, showing area utilities, lighting, and signs. Plan should indicate any existing proposed building mounted signs, awning, structure, mechanical systems. I'm on comment 13 here. Mm -hmm. uh, that protrude beyond the building footprint with vertical clearances noted. Uh, any features that extend into public rights away, less than 12 foot vertical clearance, uh, those require Board of Public Works approval. Um, the existing building had a sign that juts out over the sidewalk. There's an awning that's over the sidewalk. Um, we weren't sure if this uh, new use would require any kind of mechanical venting systems that would protrude o over the uh, public street of the bus the building or over the sidewalk. Uh, so those are questions that we're just asking to have answered. Um, building access points and doorways should be shown on the plans. Again, I don't know why there's such an objection to showing uh, doorways on the plans and confirming which ones are for the residential uses versus the uh, restaurant use. And if the, you know, we asked a question about is there ADA compliant access to the restaurant? If that's not required, then they can answer that that's not, that that's not required um, and address that comment. In regards to the contribution, um, we asked for these contributions to mitigate traffic impacts from um, developments. Uh, we've been consistent in that. Uh, in this case, the applicant for ITIR, they estimated trips far, uh, far in excess of what we thought was reasonable. Based upon their numbers, we would have uh, had a much larger uh, um, contribution request, uh, almost double. Um, but uh, senior engineer Wayne Husband uh, didn't understand the TIR, you know, the, the basis of how they came to the numbers they came to, came up with some alternate and uh, lesser numbers, and we asked for a contribution in, in uh, accordance with that. Uh, lesser amount. And again, we're just trying to be consistent. The city does have plenty of traffic needs. Uh, Canal Street Corridor is a busy corridor. Um, there are signal systems um, that need continually upgraded and, and, and we want, we, you know, to make, uh, make those improvements as we've done other places. We will rely in part on uh, developments such as this mitigating the traffic impact uh, and supporting those changes. Obviously, this 
use in itself is small enough individually. It doesn't warrant any major changes, um, but it's, you know, it's one, one development among many, and w when each, each uh, development pays uh, a portion and a fair share, you know, based upon the traffic they generate, uh, we can compile those funds and we can actually do uh, real things and good things to improve uh, flow on these traffic orders. So uh, I've just gone through every one of uh, the comments. Uh, if the, the board uh, can obviously do what it wishes. Uh, if it wants to reject, reject these comments, that's fine. Um, but I think uh, these are all fairly reasonable requests and, uh, and, um, and I think, uh, you know, many of them speak, as I said before, to the completeness of the plan. Um, that I, I just, uh, uh, again, these, these changes don't happen all the time. I think those are appropriate points in time to both get a good plan on file for, for exactly what the current situation is, what the proposed situation is, uh, document all that, and make sure all the uh, life safety and other issues are addressed um, to uh, engineering and the board's satisfaction. Uh, engineering makes its comments uh, based upon what it sees and what it considers uh, uh, important to address, but obviously ours are only recommendations and we certainly welcome the board's input and or revision of any of the, if any of those seem unreasonable. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Klee. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I appreciate uh, Mr. Hudson's uh, clarification of it and I also appreciate the applicant's concerns that they, they got this so late. Um, I don't know why it happened and I um, while I would love someone to be able to tell me that, um, sometimes these things happen. Um, the holidays have been here. These things don't happen. They're regular. They happen all the time. We get these stuff a day or two before. All the time. I, I appreciate that comment, um, and, I, and I'm not going to debate it. Um, but as Mr. Hudson went through each and every one of these things, um, I do have concerns. Um, that we would just approve something like this without these questions being answered. I understand the applicant's frustration, um, or his representative, I should say, um, and, and so on. I don't think the, once it's been clarified by Mr. Hudson, these are unreasonable asks. I don't know normally what you do during these situations if you ask it to be tabled, um, or if maybe we can go through some of these things, but these are concerns. I don't think um, this board, um, does as you know go through with eyes closed when it comes to um, a new business taking over. Um, we grandfather things in because they've been that way, um, and we don't want to put an undue hardship on that that person that's there now just because we changed the rules and the laws. But I think when new ownership or new change of use comes through, we should dot those eyes and cross those T's. Um, so to to ask about the sewer line. And I can tell you, as a resident of Ward 3, as the alderman of Ward 3, um, and being in one of the oldest sections of Nashua, um, we're seeing more and more issues with uh, sewer lines, um, water supply, and so on. I can say we just did all this work on Orange Street and, and that area because of the sewer lines and, and needing to be relined and, and so on. So but, I, but that was discovered. There's nothing here. This is, this is a poke yeah. in the wilderness uh, looking for things like this. We have, them, we have our applicants test all the sewers in the city every time they come in for, before this board. That's unreasonable. And it's we, expensive. We get it. We, we understand your, your position. I think it's super clear. And, and we my can, comments stand no matter what. Planning got it. is in charge of parking. I don't care what City Engineer Hudson wants to say about parking and all the history and all this stuff. It is what it is. It's on the Understood. plan. It's, the planning department's with it, it meets their criteria. You know, you make up all these stories to back these guys up. No, this letter should be rejected out of hand. Understood, that we understand your position. My comments stand, thank you. Okay. Um, if I make. If, I just, if there are any other questions for the applicant, I think a lot of the we things can, I'm saying, we can okay. do in a meeting, yeah. so. Does Actually, anybody have any more questions for I, the applicant? I just did. Yep, go ahead. Um, because based on what, um, what uh, Mr. Hudson said. Just one of the simple things of um, the comment about the, the striping and the, um, the, I forget what it's called, the, the thing curb, you would put in front size. of a car. Right, thank you, the curb edge. The Those to me are, are, are the safety. The site calls for striping. It, it will be striped. It shows, it, it shows striping. You, know, okay. it shows, you, know, it you shows don't have to make any special it, it notes does, it, to stripe a parking lot. 
It shows everything the same. You can't tell what's existing, what's proposed. I mean, what, what, what we need to consider is not accepting these plans um, as complete when they're, when they're confusing at best. Okay. And this is not, we don't have this issue with every applicant. This is, this is a few applicants where we're getting these plans. They're very hard to decipher. We're doing the best we can. We're asked about the parking because we don't know because you can't tell from the plan. Okay. We need Good. better plans or these questions need to be answered. Um, to the, our satisfaction. So, okay. so my, my three questions actually were relative to the parking, the, the striping, yeah. that retaining wall, and um, yeah. the curb things. I find all of those to be safety issues, and that's all I wanted to hear from the applicant was, so the answer to the striping is that the striping will be there and so on. Right. The retaining wall, I do think it is hazardous. I have seen it. It is, it is broken down. And then those um, guides. I don't want someone... Um, having their delicious pizza and going in the wrong direction and plowing into someone's home. Um, I'd rather them hit that curb. So that was kind of my questions to the applicant, if, if that's okay. Yeah, I mean, is there, what? did you want a response to the curb? The, 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 the curb front and stop. the retaining wall. If and the retaining, any wall. Of those the retaining wall is fine. It's in its own <laughs> dedicated area. It's been there for decades. It works today, it'll work tomorrow. It's not in, it doesn't look very good, but it's not in disrepair. It, it does what it's supposed to do. It's changed in elevations. It, it does nothing to interfere with the parking lot. It works fine with the parking lot. It works fine today, and it'll work fine tomorrow. And we don't need to do anything with that retaining wall. And, and the curb portions in the front there? What curb in the front? The, the curb bump stops. stops. The curb, curb stops. stops. Huh? Curb, curb stops. stops. That's on another property. That's on an abutting property. That's not us. Yeah. Okay. No. I no. disagree with that, sir. That's it's got nothing to do with us. That, that's, that's not what the comment was. No, the comment was for you to have them on your parking. Oh, we don't, need, we don't need curb stops on our parking lot, no. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, thanks. Uh, any other, I think we're all set. Thank you. Any other questions for staff before I close the hearing? All right, I'm going to go ahead and close the hearing. So, all right, so we have um, a change of use. Obviously, you have some disagreement over the letter from engineering. <coughs> um, obviously, it was reasonably late in the game. Really, I feel like there's, you know, with any of these applications, we have three choices, approve, disapprove, table them. If we feel like the applicant and the engineering need to work something out, we can table it. If we feel like we're okay with what's written as written, we can go forward and make motions with that in place, or we can take it completely out. So I'm interested in what people's comments are. Um, I'm not going to make the motion, hmm. um, because once I make a tabling motion, <laughs> there's no more discussion. Right. Um, um, but I, I, I do think things need to be worked out, so I'm going to leave it at that. I, I kind of put some of my questions. I think what um, Mr. Hudson brought forward are some real questions that do need to be answered and I think things need to be worked out. I hate the fact that this gets delayed. I know um, every, every time we delay it, it costs the applicant and so on money um, mm -hmm. and, and I hate to do something like this, but I also don't want to um, make one mistake a bigger mistake. So I'm, okay. not, I'm not making that motion, but I'm putting out that I think it would be a better idea. Mr. Varley? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, yeah, I, so I understand, I accept that the applicant um, has a reasonable concern about the timing in the letter, and, and Mr. Hudson, I know you, you addressed that, but it seems to me that there are a number of comments in here that are very reasonable, um, and some that may require some further discussion. I would be happy to give the applicant additional time by tabling the matter if, if that's their desire to discuss these comments with the engineering department, but I'm certainly not going to reject this letter out of hand because it came in on November 30th. I mean, I, I think, you know, and I appreciate as well the comment about the importance of having complete plans that the engineering department can evaluate <coughs> appropriately mm -hmm. um, and getting responses to questions that need to be answered. And frankly, it looks like a number of these things that are identified here are, are basically comments about things that should be on the plan that aren't on the plan. Um, and so 
you know, I'm sorry, Mr. Maynard, but that's not an unreasonable request. Um, you, the plans need to be complete when they're submitted. Um, so I, I would be happy to, to consider it, uh, you know, again, a tabling motion if that's what the, if the applicant is amenable to that. And then, uh, ultimately, I just want to note that we do, uh, we don't adhere strictly to Robert's rules, so we okay. do permit discussion on tabling motions. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Yeah, I just, I just want, for one, want to say that I'm not, I'm not in favor of tabling. I don't think that, although this is comment letter is extensive, I don't think that the issues are uh, that extensive. I think most of them can be easily addressed by answering the question uh, or making modifications to the plans. Um, so I believe, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not opposed to conditional approval, and we'll try to work through those, uh, you know, issues with uh, Mr. Maynard and the applicant. Mm -hmm. um, should we reach an impasse and have to come back to the board because some some condition we can't work through, then maybe we would have that discussion. That it could come back to the board at that point, right. um, you know. But uh, but I, I again, I think most of the most of these things are very simple though, to address or answer the question, in my opinion. Um, and so I, I don't know why there's such a strong objection to to them. Um, It'd be great if every applicant didn't have to do give us anything, and it didn't cost them anything to do anything. But that's not that's not reality. That's not our position. That's not uh, what we're here for. We're not here just to um, shut up and approve things. Um, we're here to uh, ask questions and, and get things clarified for the record. And so that's all we're trying to do. Okay. Anybody else? Ms. Harper. Um, just quickly, I, I have uh, the same sentiment uh, as my colleagues over here. Uh, I do feel for the applicant that you did receive this letter late, but it would be difficult for me to disregard, you know, some of these life safety issues and, and just bypass the letter. So I think I would be in favor of, of tabling it to give you some, some time. Mr. Hirsch? I think a conditional approval, subject to his ability to negotiate, you know, between the uh, city and uh, Mr. Maynard, uh, the, uh, the changes shouldn't be an issue. Most of these things are very minor, it seems. I mean, bumpers, I mean, how much can they cost? Uh, I don't know about the sewer inspection, but everything else seems to be fairly easily dealt with. Can we approve it subject to their um, coming to terms with the engineering department? Yeah, I mean, that's that's not uncommon it, for us. Yeah, it seems like that would be the way to go. Not, not, not uncommon at all. I mean, they're generally, um, Regardless of when the timing of the comments come in, there it's it's actually relatively uncommon that all of the conditions right. and comments are worked out before, you know. So our conditional approval that you know that these comments have been worked out to, you know, satis satisfaction of the engineering department is is very common and typical. So. Alderman Cleek. Thank you. Um, I, I don't have an issue with conditional approval as long as we're very clear as to what things are needed. And uh, maybe I'm going too far out here, but um, I find curb stops are, are extremely important. Um, I, I know they, they may not stop somebody who's zooming through, but we're hearing more and more about people that are making mistakes and driving through things. And um, in all fairness to the abutter and the safety of, of mm -hmm. them, I would not feel comfortable without something like that being put in place now that we've talked about it and discussed it. Um, I disagree with the retaining wall, wall um, I, but I'm not an engineer, so I, I, um, I apologize for my comment on that, but I do think that retaining wall needs some assistance. Mm -hmm. um, but I would leave it to um, Mr. Hudson and so on and the rest of the board to go through each one, what they would be conditional. I assume that you give an outline as to approval based on these, or is it just a blanket approval of the negotiation what happened between engineering and? Um, generally speaking, we don't put a condition of negotiating between them. I would say we would typically say to the satisfaction of the engineering department, but if there is a particular item in the review comments that the board feels isn't required or could be a negotiation point, we, we could specify that one. I wouldn't say we'd go point by point, because you know, I, I really only see, personally myself, like two items in here that would warrant any discussion on our end in terms of 
you know, because they're costs of the applicant, one's the video of the sewer and one's the contribution. And I guess the rest of them seem pretty straightforward to me that they need to be addressed to the satisfaction of the engineering department. Those two are more um, additive to the, to the process. Um, my two cents on the video is we're going from a laundromat to a restaurant. I mean, restaurant um, sanitary discharge is notoriously clogs sewers. <laughs> you know, there's grease and there's other stuff, which isn't typical of a laundromat. Actually, laundromats tend to clean out the sewers, mm -hmm. you know, more than, uh, than a restaurant. Um, and I am an engineer, and I do design that stuff, so I know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> but... Um, so I, I'm not really up for personally getting rid of that requirement. Right. Um, the traffic contribution, I mean, there's some, you know, we have negotiated those ones before, you know. Um, they're somewhat newer. There isn't a lot of site work. I can understand if the board maybe had different opinions on that. So, I don't know. Thoughts? Can I just, yeah. thank you. Um, I, I too agree with you with the sewer. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very concerned about that. I, I'm seeing so many things happening within the ward and, and, and failures, and I think this would be truly a hardship onto that possible hardship onto that sewer system. Um, as far as, and perhaps you or, or Mr. Hudson can explain to me a little bit more, the um, negotiating of the, um, of the traffic um, input and so on. Um, if I heard you correctly, you said that um, this was lower than, than some um, because of lesser impact. When I look at the TIR, I see that they're saying that I think the expected versus the proposed, um, or the current versus the proposed, it looks like it's less. Um, did I read that properly? The traffic uh, not, impact. Not during the development peak hour. It's higher. Right, much, I did see that. Higher, yeah. so. Yeah, but, but again, uh, we reviewed what they provided. We, had, we uh, actually reduced uh, the increase and prepared our calculation based upon that, um, using this, the uh, $250 per trip that we've been using for every other applicant. We're just trying to be consistent. I mean, sure. uh, I, uh, you know, if the, if the board wants to waive that, in this case, I, I don't necessarily object to that, but, you know, we're trying to be consistent in making the same request of every applicant based upon their traffic impact. Then, mm -hmm. then apologize. I apologize again for my, my mm -hmm. comment. I, I don't think we should be setting precedences and, and lowering things. If we have a standard that we need to do, I, I understand that it becomes an economic hardship. I'm dealing with that constantly within my ward. But um, once we start doing it for somebody else because it's too costly for them, how do we then say to the next person, we're not going to do it to you? And this was put in place for a reason uh, to help mitigate other things. And I've been hearing about this since I come onto the board, so I, I don't feel quite comfortable reducing it if it's already been reduced to the lowest that it possibly could. So, okay. for their their thing, and I'll stop here. Thank you. Well, uh, I had a question for staff on the, the fire department comments. Are there? There are none. So that could go away. Yeah. Okay. All right. Does anybody else have any questions? Does anybody any comments in the meeting here? I, I Mr. guess. Mr. Marley. Just quickly to add to the um, traffic impact contribution, I mean, I, I guess, I mean, I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I've heard any, any basis for distinguishing between this application and, and other applications where we've applied the same methodology to determine, you know, requested traffic contribution. So, you know, there's not, to me, there's not, there's not a basis on which I would say we should change our approach in this particular case. Um, so, I mean, to the extent that we're applying the same data, the same methodology to determine if there's going to be the X increase in, in, in traffic trips and generated and it's the $250 per trip, I, I don't see a, like I said, I don't see a basis for, for varying our approach absent some other factors which I haven't heard. Okay. Other comments in the meeting by the board? Somebody want to make a motion? Alderman Klee? Um, stop me if I've got this wrong. No um, but I, I would like to make the motion for uh, conditional approval 
Mm -hmm. um, and from that end, do we normally just basically say, um, based on the, um, I don't want to say negotiations again, but based on the workings with um, engineering and the applicants? Well, or do stipulation I to, number three is, is right. basically that. If you, if you don't want to edit any of that, you can just right as stipulations as as written it sounds like number 4 is is unnecessary right so we could remove that but yes. if you want to so i would just say uh, um, as uh, stipulated on that with the removal of um, comment number 4 and could you address the waiver for um, NRO 192.79ee which is in stipulation 1 would you what would you want to, that to read as that that's the existing condition waiver which is is a kind of a typical one for right time. so basically yeah. I would just I would um, let me make sure I read this properly yep. I, so it's do I do, do I need to read each of the notes here or do I just um, you can just say whether or not it's granted and whether or not it'll be concrete what we say is okay, thank you so this, yep, that's this right. waiver request and you know the choice is or is not granted right. okay yeah. will not be contrary this may I use your yes thank you. yep. the request for a waiver of NRO 190-279EE, which shows existing conditions, particularly off-site utilities under Article 32, is granted. Fin finding that the waiver will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. Okay. All right. So I'll summarize and just Thank make you. sure if I get it right. Um, so we have that motion to approve from Alderman Clee that this plan does meet the requirements outlined in NRO 190-146D with the three stipulations as, as um, indicate the first three stipulations um, within the staff report and the first waiver of 190-279EE being read as is granted and will not be contrary. So is that accurate? Yep. Yes. Okay. Please, thank you. So do we have a second on that? Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Mr. <clears throat> Hudson. Um, Stipulation 2 can be removed, too, because they have submitted a TIR worksheet. Oh, okay. Would you want to amend to remove that? Yes. Okay. Um, and, again, I apologize. No, that's um, a good, good point. And uh, an we, we can remove Stipulation 2 as the TIR, the Traffic Impact, impact Report a worksheet, has been um, submitted. Okay. So uh, amended to remove number 2 and, obviously, number 3 right. in the staff report being rewritten as number 2. Right. And number 2 with a date of 11.30. Oh, dated 1130. Yep. Yep. 1130. Yep. 22. Okay. So, so let me just I, summarize it one more time for you and just tell me if it's right. Okay, you. So you've got a motion to the plan meets the requirement of NRO 190 146 D. First stipulation being that the waiver of NRO 190 279 EE is granted and will not be contrary. And the second stipulation being prior to the chair signing the plan. All comments and email from Joe Mandola, senior staff engineer, dated the 30th of November 22, shall be addressed to the satisfaction of the engineering department. And do we need to put a date also on item number, the new item number three? Um, yes. Well, I read that That's as number two. Number two. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Makes sense. No, I'm, I'm sorry, the number four, do I need No, to? that's the... That's afterwards, that. yes. Okay, that's that. right, yes. Okay. Yep. Thank, thank you so much for your patience, yeah, no Mr. Problem. Chairman. Um, so with that motion, do we have a second? Second by Mr. Hirsch. Any further discussion by the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <gasps> that, that motion passes. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to the uh, next up, we have an old business site plan. Uh, this is case number A22-0039. This is Merritt Place LLC owner. It's a proposed 44 unit townhouse development containing 11 buildings with four units each. Uh, along with associated site improvements, this property is located at 8 Merritt Parkway. Um, this particular site plan um, was tabled from our November 17th, 2022 meeting. Um, we have not taken jurisdiction of this yet. So, um, so I'm not sure it's really tabled, right? Or was it no, postponed? Yeah, okay. Have not, yeah, have so there's no the reason to take this off the table. It's just on the agenda for tonight. So, Mike, did you, are you recusing for this one? Okay. All right. Thanks. So, um, just want to note that for the record. yeah, I'm going to note for the record that uh, 
Mike Peterson is um, recusing himself from A22-0039. Um, we still have uh, six of us up here, yeah. So, so we're still within quorum. Um, so I think everybody was here for the prior readings of the variances requests for this particular uh, item. So now we're talking specifically about the site plan. Um, the first discussion here for the board this is just the board at this point, um, although you can have questions for the applicant or staff, um, but we're not in a hearing yet, um, is whether or not this is ready for us to take jurisdiction as submitted. We feel this is a complete application. Is any, go ahead, Mr. Hudson. Yeah, I had a question about that. I mean, mm -hmm. at the last uh, discussion, there was some discussion yep. about multifamily and um, you know, does this, is this multifamily, is that allowed? I did see in the packet there was a, uh, a letter um, addressing that. I just wanted to see what staff's uh, position on the, that letter was in reference to whether that, you know, the form or, or whatever um, uh, is such that we wouldn't need a variance to take this up. Sure. George, so this is in reference to the letter dated uh, November 29th, uh, 2022. Uh, there's two pieces to this letter. Um, points uh, one, two, and three really speak to um, whether or not a variance is required. And the last paragraph provides a second means of um, taking jurisdiction and utilizing the modification criteria that's uh, as part of the uh, mixed-use overlay districts. Um, this particular district, the FUOD, uh, does refer to that uh, modification criteria in its administrative section of that uh, chapter. Uh, and, and utilizing that as a methodology to reach uh, a, a situation where a variance would not be required, staff is comfortable with utilizing that as an approach uh, to uh, grant the uh, the modification to the underlying to permit uh, multifamily housing. Okay. Other questions by the board for staff ahead of this? Any motion on jurisdiction? Mr. Varley? Yeah, just, uh, I guess I just want to make sure I understand. So, in 190.25, you looking at the it would be uh, in the administrative section which is subsection I right and then subsection two of that May I ask however that is not to preclude uh, the board from finding uh, reason within uh, the rest of the applicants letter I'm simply speaking to the application of the modification criteria uh, and we are uh, comfortable with using that as a way uh, to take jurisdiction of this application. Further questions? Alderman Klee? Could, could you um, please repeat the, the section 190-25? I-2. I-2. Okay. Thank you. And then through that, it refers to a number of other sections, but eventually right. you get to, uh, I believe it's 190.23, which is the mixed use overlay and the modification criteria uh, stated within that. And to that effect, the applicant has provided uh, the required uh, site suitability analysis. Thank you. Mr. Barley, do you still have questions on that? Yeah, I guess I just, I just want to make sure I, I understand what or is what you're saying that, that we would ultimately, the view is that, that a, a waiver, or I'm sorry, that a, a variance would not be required because we could waive that requirement under this authority? You can, you can modify uh, the underlying using that modification criteria. However, you may also find uh, that the applicant's reasoning is sufficient uh, to not need to use that modification criteria. And just to be clear, that that was not an option with respect to the two variances that we heard previously because they were not related to the underlying criteria? They were tied directly to the FUOD ordinance. So those variances that were granted were specifically relative to 190-25. Right. Whereas and this, the application of the MU modification criteria is for the underlying district. Right. So that this is... 
because we're, we're talking about uh, a, a criteria of the R30 zone as opposed to the flexible use of Exactly. Okay. Thank you. I'm wondering if um, there's a way to summarize that again in a um, little more of a layman perspective. <laughs> I, I I, <laughs> can someone do that? <laughs> I think I could probably take a shot at that. I, I, um, would you, I mean, I, I don't want to cut off discussion. Do you, do you want me to do that in the form of a motion or? No, no, just maybe a, we're in discussion. So right. I, yeah. So I think, you know, my understanding in that, because I was, I was getting a little bit hung up on it was not appreciating the distinction. So I think the, the difference, as I understand it, is you know when when the previous variances were before us, they were for for, for variances from the requirements of the flexible use overlay district. Got it. So the flexible use overlay district, for example, only permits age restricted housing. Right. Um, so the applicant needed a variance to permit that. Um, if I understand what Mr. Trevi is saying. What we're talking about here in terms of um, multifamily housing, that is a that's a requirement that's associated with the underlying district, meaning the R30 zone on which the flexible use overlay district sits. So this provision is is broader in that it allows us to, as part of the site plan review, modify the requirements of the underlying district. Because it's 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 not it's not a provision of the FUOD, it's a provision of the R30 zone. And, and the requirements of that modification, typical to any overlay, is there's a site plan suitability set of criteria, yes. which is attempted to have been ad addressed by the November 29th from, uh, Keechner, letter from, from Associates. Yep. Okay. Um, in this discussion, we can hear from the applicant. This is not a public session at this point, but I, if someone wants to hear from the applicant with respect to jurisdiction, that is, we can, that's allowable. Does anybody, I'm sort of recommending we may want to, <laughs> and to understand their letters that yes. they've sent regarding this. Does somebody from the applicant want to speak on that? Like, specifically is the, the letters that you've submitted to us. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, good evening. Uh, my name is Andy Perlman, attorney with Pruning and Perlman here in Nashville here on behalf of Merit Place Limited Liability Company. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we, um, our team submitted two letters to you dated November 29th. My letter uh, to the board that was um, uh, supported by uh, Paul Chisholm's letter from Keech Nordstrom. Um, and my letter argued that we believe you have jurisdiction as is our plans were clear, the notices were clear, uh, the ordinance allows the flexibility. Um, the plan showed a 44 unit uh, project. The notice said it's going to be 44 units, 11 buildings of four. We think there's plenty of notice, and you know the um, the application is duly before you to accept jurisdiction. However, if you don't buy that argument, we said there's another route to go under um, section I2 that allows the modification. Um, to the R30 district through the, it's kind of a convoluted route, the uh, section I2 of the FUOD refers us to the downtown um, district. And if we want to modify um, standards of the downtown dif district, we're referred over to the mixed use district, which has the, which requires the site plan suitability report. We provided that through Paul Chisholm's um, letter we address it's a couple pages. We address each criteria of the site plan suitability site plan suitability report, and so we we believe we have it covered either way. Either you have a jurisdiction, um, you know, just based upon the notice and the plans that are before you, or you can go through the I two route um, through the site plan suitability report. Okay. Any questions by the board? The applicant or what's been present okay thank you thank you um, question for staff um, 
Is there any require? I mean, there's there's no requirement for us to actually dictate which of those paths that we are using in our decision making. I mean, it's obviously all individual decision making here, but correct. Uh, should yeah. you reach uh, a motion for approval tonight, um, and you choose to use the modification criteria in the mixed use district, uh, you would want to articulate that. Okay. Okay. All right. Other discussion or questions before we decide on jurisdiction? Ms. Hudson, you, you had the initial question. Did, yeah, is that clear? Yeah. Okay. All right. So at this point, I guess then I'll ask, has anybody um, had a chance to review this application and want to make a motion regarding jurisdiction? Mr. Varley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, So as to old business site plans, uh, case number A22-0039, uh, Merritt Place LLC, um, I would make a motion that the, having read the application, um, determining that it is complete and ready for the board to accept jurisdiction, and specifically with reference to the discussion that we've just had. Okay, so we have that motion on A22-0039 regarding jurisdiction only at this point. Um, does anybody want to second that motion? Second by Mr. Hirsch. Any further discussion by the board on jurisdiction? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. That motion passes, so we have jurisdiction at this point. So, um, so now that we have jurisdiction, um, we're going to move into, I guess the applicant has a uh, presentation they want to give on the site plan. Yep. Yes, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, for the record, my name is Paul Chisholm. I'm an engineer with Keech Norwich and Associates. We're the engineers and surveyors of record for the project. I'm joined tonight by the applicant, Merritt Place LLC, uh, Rob Parsons, uh, and of course, Andy Perlman, who you just heard from. The plan before you tonight is a new 44 unit townhouse development located at 8 Merritt Parkway in the Maplewood Mixed Use Village. The project is situated on a 6.2 acre condo parcel within an overall 20 acre property. Uh, in the underlying R30 zoning district as well as the flexible use overlay district. The project area is surrounded by development consisting of various businesses obviously on the property itself, uh, surrounding adjacent residential neighborhoods on Houston Drive, which are elderly, uh, and single family homes on Cherrywood Drive. Across the street on Main Dunstable, you have the uh, soccer fields associated with the Main Dunstable School uh, property, and uh, many of the other properties around abutting this parcel are, are actually open space parcels owned by the city. Uh, that were created kind of at the onset of the FUOD. The 44 units will be constructed in a campus style development consisting of 11 buildings in four units each. Uh, they'll have a full array of typical city utilities, including underground, uh, electric, sewer, water, cable, and gas. The units themselves are designed to be high end and will have luxury finishes uh, in order to match and support the surrounding land values and property types that are existing today. Access to the site is from one of two roads on the north side from Conant. Road and on the south from Buck Meadow, and then internally through the site on Merritt, uh, Merritt Parkway. The project itself includes about a thousand feet of new private roadway, um, which will be formally bring Mangerian Lane into existence and provide access to all of the new units. Mangerian Lane currently is kind of a, you know, half constructed. I'll say it's it's more of a gravel path more than anything. The new streets will be well landscaped with a variety of trees and shrubbery, uh, as submitted on the uh, landscape plans. Um, and that's going to mix in with the residential scale lighting that's also shown on the lighting plan to kind of create a, a very high-end residential uh, feel and aura to it. Uh, additionally, uh, on the uh, landscape plan, you'll also see that there's um, an additional buffer uh, on the southeast corner of the property. Um, and that actually is designed to exceed any local regulation that's required here. That's the uh, area of the site that's actually closest to the nearest single-family home. Um, Linda, that landscape plan is, if folks want to see that, I think it would probably make sense to bring that up, is uh, sheet 11 of 25. It's on the plan set, so it might be page 12 on the PDF itself. Um, 
and you can see there's a there's a row of arborvitaes. There's obviously uh, a number of existing vegetation that's going to stay, uh, different heights, different types of vegetation that are going to create a good buffer there. Um, in addition to the local approval process, this project is required to obtain a state sewer connection and alteration terrain permits. Um, the sewer connection is obviously just to allow the project to tie into the existing uh, sewer system, uh, make sure obviously that there's capacity at the wastewater treatment plan and so on and so forth. That is also reviewed here locally. We have submitted that permit to DPW um, since the last time we saw you. Uh, and the alteration of terrain permit uh, has been reviewed by the state. They issued a set of comments that uh, to us seem fairly easily addressed and um, is ready to go back to them for final approval. The development will utilize both pre-existing and new stormwater management features to offset the additional impervious areas. And provide stormwater treatment, attenuation, and groundwater recharge as required by local and state regulations. The two new uh, stormwater BMPs include a bioretention area on the east side of the site and a new underground storm tech chain, uh, recharge system, which basically uh, promotes groundwater recharge uh, in the uh, area a little between the, one of the units and the landscape buffer I was just talking about. Uh, all those are designed in accordance with uh, today's current standards and best management practices. During construction, the site is big enough that it's going to require oversight uh, uh, in terms of the EPA standards and require a stormwater pollution prevention plan. That's something that basically uh, helps monitor and track erosion uh, during construction to prevent um, any adverse conditions uh, during that process. Uh, inspections are weekly on a site like this um, at a minimum and uh, any time over, I believe it's a quarter inch of rain in a 24-hour period. Um, as required with any new project in Nashua, a traffic impact report was prepared and submitted as part of the application. Uh, this was discussed a little bit at the variance applications, but uh, essentially the TIR concluded that no further analysis is required. Um, you know, any of the calculations really showed that uh, the thresholds that are set to require a further analysis or study, uh, we were only at about a third of those at the most. Uh, this project was also reviewed by Wayne Husband in the Traffic Engineering Department. Uh, he did not request any further analysis or study. Uh, he did, however, uh, request a fee contribution to the nearest traffic quarter. Uh, I believe that amount was $7,500. The applicant has agreed to uh, pay that amount. Um, this uh, application is also seeking approval of a more traditional waiver, not the type of waivers obviously we saw uh, and talked about at the last hearing. Um, this waiver is for land use code section 190-279-EE to alleviate, uh, alleviate the need to show existing conditions within 1,000 feet of the site. I know this is a fairly common waiver that you folks see. Um, we did pick up necessary survey that was required to help complete the design off-site. Of course, we just didn't go the full 1,000 feet around. Um, there's a number of, uh, of course, uh, single-family residences that are also speaking in opposition, so to try and get onto their property I think would be quite difficult for us as well. Um, I'd be happy to go into that in more detail. I know a copy of that was submitted for your record. If you have any questions, please, uh, by all means, feel free to ask. Uh, the project has received technical review comments from the state alteration of terrain, uh, various city departments, including planning, DPW, and the fire department. We believe these technical comments were substantially uh, addressed with the most recent plan revision. But of course, should any further discussion be warranted by any department, the applicant is absolutely committed to having those discussions. Um, we've also had a chance to review the suggested approval conditions and take no exception to any of the conditions um, in, in the staff report. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I'd be happy to, I don't know if you want me to read the site suitability report in the record. It's kind of a hard thing to summarize because uh, it's kind of point by point. I don't know if you folks have had enough time to really <coughs> digest it. Um, so if you want to let me know how to handle it, I mean, it's all there. Um, certainly be happy to answer whatever questions you might have about it. I think, um, you know, most of it is pretty well explained. I, I, yeah, I, so. I, I think we can get into questions about it. Sure. Maybe from the board to sure. you. Um, okay. And, um, yeah, yeah, that might be the best approach to it. Sure. With that being said, I'd, I'd be happy to turn it over to you folks for, for any questions that you have. Okay, thanks. I have a couple of questions I wanted to go through. And first, um, with the site as it is, is there any projected blasting? Uh, I, I don't know if blasting will necessarily be required, but there will be uh, rock removal. Uh, I would think probably the best thing to do would be some limited blasting, particularly in the area of um, Building E. Building E is kind of the, the third in the middle driveway area. Um, there's some exposed rock there. Um, I would think that blasting may be required in, in that area. Um, okay. But I don't know if it's something I'm sure they'll try to hammer it out first. We'll see how that plays out. And then it's 
you know, typical of some of these types of developments where blasting has taken place, the board is sometimes um, required of the applicant to sort of video the foundation conditions of the nearby parcels, the ones that are directly, I mean, there's, a, there's probably only a couple that are reasonably sure. adjacent. Yep. Here, um, is there any any concern with that, do you, or is that acceptable to you? Um, I, I think obviously any of the, the buildings that are here on the site, that would certainly make a lot of sense to. I think a lot of the other foundations seem to be fairly far away. Um, I would say they're obviously more than willing to comply with whatever regulations are uh, yeah. in place for that sort of thing. Okay, yeah, I'm thinking specifically there's a partially constructed restaurant. Yeah. Like that's very that adjacent one's pretty close, to it. Yeah, I would think that would be appropriate. Um, there's a dental office next door, and yep. there's a, I think, a daycare to the other side. Yep. Those are really the only ones that seem like they'd be even in any vicinity of, you know, unless that I could see anyway. Yep. So there would be no objection to documenting that? No. Yeah, I, I know in, maybe we can talk about it during the meeting, but I'm sure the city can summarize what the sort of requirements are, but there are obviously a lot of them when it comes to, to blasting. Um, uh, I, ju I just uh, got confirmation from the applicant they're fine with that, yep. with those three. Yep. Can you describe trash and snow? Absolutely. being taken yeah. care of? Yep, this, absolutely. Yeah. So um, uh, I believe with any condo development, it's actually a requirement that it has to be privately handled. Uh, this in and of itself, the Maplewood condominium actually already has kind of that issue established in a way. This is just gonna be an extension of that in both cases. Um, so that's all gonna be handled privately. These are private roadways. It's a, kind of a private network. These aren't public rights of ways and streets or anything like that. Um, we have a dumpster set up. Uh, it's, it's an oversized dumpster by typical standards, but it's kind of set up for the whole development in between um, buildings G and F. That's on the daycare side um, of the property, the northern side closer to Conant Road. Um, the pad that we have set up there currently is the width of the road, so a little over uh, 24 feet, which would provide for uh, obviously uh, a multiple number of dumpsters in there. If that needed to grow for whatever reason, there's certainly other opportunities to um, expand that area specifically or provide in some other areas depending on uh, how that plays out. Again, that will be private pickup. Um, snow removal. Um, Just real quick, can you describe yep. the enclosure for that? Sure, yeah. In fact, I actually think we might have a detail of it on the plan. Yeah, I just but don't basically, it it's a concrete me. pad, it's a stockade enclosure of, of some sort, or, or like screened enclosure of some sort. So it's not something that's just open. You won't be able to necessarily just see the dumpsters by looking at it. I think it's a, the detail we typically use is, I believe, a six foot stockade fence around it. Okay. Um, so yes, no. And then in terms of snow, again, it's it's the same kind of thing. It's, um, you know, the the private privately will be maintained in that regard. Um, obviously, you know, they'll be able to plow um, between um, between the units. You can see on the main on Mangerian Lane, which is kind of the main thorough fair, I guess, if you will, through the site. Um, I think there's opportunity to push snow off to the sides. Um, in terms of the smaller driveways, they'll probably get off to the end and kind of push to the end and over to the side. Um, and in the landscaped areas. So obviously, you know, uh, we're in New England. There's years that we have just an insane amount of snow. Like any other site, it's gonna have to be removed off. You know, usually they come in with some sort of equipment and put it in a dump truck and, and haul it away. That would certainly have to happen here uh, with uh, years that are, you know, obviously a, a lot more than the normal. Okay. Um, there's a, there's, the sewer easement that goes sort of on the I guess it's on the south side of the site there. Um, you know, it's it's a trail, you know, yeah. that connects between this, it, that's that's sort of right on the property line, is that? Uh, so the, the property lines, if you will, that you see here, these are really for the internal condo lines. Right. Um, that does run right through. It was always kind of set up to collect everything and um, from the site uh, and kind of carry it off to the east there. Uh, but yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, there's actually a number of different utility easements that run through gas that, and I believe there's water on here as well. Um, but you'll see that there's actually manholes constructed in where those easements are, so they do seem to be appropriately placed. As far as like maintenance, that, that trail, the maintenance of it, since mm -hmm. it, part of it appears to go through this, yep. you know, is, 
Um, the intent is to keep it in place, the, yep. the, the walkable trail. Yeah, I don't know if anyone's been out there. I've walked down there a number of times, yep. um, just kind of in the earlier parts of design for the project. It actually does appear to be fairly well maintained. Uh, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what mechanism has that in place now, but whatever it is seems to be working. Uh, there really isn't going to be any change by result of this project. Now, what about a connection between this development and that trail? Right now, it seems like the only way to get there is through the parking lot of the dental office. Sure. Yeah, we'd certainly is be open a, to that. Um, it, what it we is, tried to do was, obviously, that's the area where we tried to really keep a very well-enhanced landscape buffer and keep as much vegetation as possible. But, um, you know, if we had kind of a meandering trail through there, I don't see why that would necessarily really change that at all. Um, so if that's something that the board's interested in us looking into, I'd certainly be happy adding that to the plan. Okay. Well, we can, I can ask the question of the board at other points. But, um, and then the only other question I had is, um, is there any requirement for sort of wetland marking around the back of the site or anything? You know, I, I think this area has the markers everywhere. Um, are you talking about like, um, it's like conservation a, zone? Yeah, or yeah, like exactly. That? Uh, yeah, we could certainly add them. Um, there's the Cold Brook exists just to the east here. Um, and we do have a little bit of not the brook itself, but the wetland associated next to the brook does extend onto the site. That has a 40 foot buffer on it. Um, I think what's typical in a lot of places is to put placards up, you know, every 50 feet or so along that. So we could certainly do that. Um, I don't know, does the Conservation Commission have a typical one they use? There are typical ones out in that area. Yeah. Okay. All around the Maplewood development, yeah. for okay. sure. That's standard practice. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we could certainly add those. Okay. Those are the questions I have. Uh, other folks from the board? Questions for the applicant? Yeah. Anyone? Okay. All right. Um, hearing no further questions um, from the board, I will go ahead and open up to the public. Um, first up, I'm, I will open up to anybody wishing to speak in opposition or concern to this plan. Please go ahead and come forward to the microphone and um, state your name and address for record. And um, feel free to ask any questions or provide any comment to the board. McCarthy, sorry. That's okay. Gloria yeah, just McCarthy. Pull, pull that down if you can. <laughs> 65 Musket Drive, Nashua, and I'm here in opposition to the proposal at Merritt Place. I have emailed this board and I've spoken against this project in the past, and my reasons for opposition, I believe, have been clearly stated and they have not changed. I'm opposed to these buildings because they are not in keeping with the surroundings. They are oversized compared to the other structures nearby. They will be taller, they will be longer, and they will be wider than any of the adjacent businesses or single family homes. Each townhouse has a square footage of about 1,700 square feet, a total square footage of approximately 79,000 square feet for all 44 townhomes. Ordinance 190-25 in section E clearly states that the combined square footage of all structures in the mixed use village also known as the Commerce Center at Maplewood, where these are being proposed, shall not exceed 80,000 square feet. That includes all structures permitted under the mixed use village 19025A2. Unit 8 has about 36,000 square feet left available for development. This was clear to the applicant when he purchased the land as it appears on his initial plan submission. One of the stipulations mentioned in the planning board staff report uh, is the formation of a condominium association. Unit 8, as this tract of land has been referred to, is already a part of the Commerce Center at Maplewood Condominium Association, as is shown on document number 6222-0732 and its accompanying plans. It was recorded at the Registry of Deeds March 29th in 2000 and says on page 4C, subset I, buildings, all buildings to be constructed within the condominium shall be used for retail, business, or commercial purposes. And further states, the use of the buildings shown on the plans are for refer reference purposes only and may change from time to time from one primary purpose to another, provided the use remains for commercial or retail or business purposes. 
If this unit is somehow able to be removed from the Commerce Center at Maplewood Condominium Association, the applicant would no longer have the, a share in the open space land and the other amenities that it, the association enjoys. It would also make it completely subject to the underlying R30 zone. Land Use Code Section 190-14 Purpose Statement states the R30 zone is similar to R40 with a slightly smaller minimum lot size of 30,000 square feet. Most of the R30 districts provide buffer between the R40 district and suburban areas, such as the Southwest Quadrant and Northwest Quadrant near the Hollis border west of the airport. 8 Merritt Parkway, Sheet C, Lot 2544 is in the R30 zone. These are multifamily family units which are not permitted in an R30 zone. This information can be found in 190-15 permitted uses in the matrix line 15. I do not envy your task this evening. You have heard either in person or by email from hundreds of city residents. The ward alderman, other city aldermen, and our state representative all opposed to this plan. And you've heard from the applicant who would like to build what he wants to build on the land he purchased. Your decision could come as a compromise where neither side would be happy, but could get both sides a form of justice. Single family homes, as suggested by, at the last meeting by Dr. Haas, could be that compromise. While the neighbors would lose the possibility of further service establishments, the single family homes would at least blend seamlessly into the surroundings. And while the applicant would not be able to build 44 townhouses, he would be able to provide housing in the form of single family homes, which would still be of benefit to the city. A lot of time and effort and forethought went into the planning for the Maplewood development in the Southwest, West, Southwest Quadrant Master Plan, and those, that has been minimized in the name of housing. While the city does need housing, it has needed it for 40 plus years. And until the communities around us change their zoning laws, which are more stringent than ours, we will continue to need housing. But there has been no cohesive plan about what type of housing we need and where that housing should be. Spot zoning or of current R30 or R40 land just for the sake of housing sets a bad precedent, not only for the land in the Southwest Quadrant, but all other neighborhoods in this city as well. And I urge you to vote against this. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Nope. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, anybody else in the audience here wish to speak or opposition or concern or have a question? Come on up. So I'm actually speaking on behalf of Corey Thayer specifically. She couldn't be here this evening. She wanted to, but she actually lives clear out in Raymond. So there was no way for her to reasonably get from Color Trends back to Raymond and back to here. So she asked me to read this for you. Yeah, just make sure you state your name and address for record as well. Could you also just state your name and address for record? Absolutely. As well? Thank you. Uh, my name is Dr. Amy Haas. I live personally at 19 Bartimus Trail in Nashua, and my business, Path of Life Chiropractic, is at 25 Merritt Parkway. Okay, thanks. This is on behalf of Corey Thayer, who lives in Raymond, New Hampshire, and her business is next door to mine at 25 Merritt Parkway. Okay. Um, so she wrote, I'm Corey Thayer, owner of Color Trends Hair Salon at 25 Merritt Parkway. Thank you for the opportunity to voice the perspectives of a Merritt Parkway business owner on the proposed development at 8 Merritt. Uh, my neighbor, Dr. Amy, has represented me at prior plan planning board meetings, and I have chose, oh, she was going to choose to attend this one in person because I think the issue of exactly how this parcel should be developed is really important to us as a community. Um, she would have been here tonight to register my opposition to the development at 8 Merritt as proposed and to request that the developers of this parcel be held to the pre-existing codes as they move forward with their project. Uh, she wrote, I don't disagree that Nashua needs more housing. We do. That said, the scope of the project proposed is not in keeping with the existing codes for our area that specify single family housing can be built on that property with a certain amount of space between each dwelling and 
uh, that's different than what the developers have proposed, a multi-family townhouse development. It is my opinion that de developers should be restricted to the codes that were in place that they were likely aware of when they purchased that, por por that parcel of land. And those codes, again, were single family dwellings, such as the new single family condos at Craftsman Lane down the street by Yedeki Farms. Do you guys know where that is? Yes. Really nice little development. They did good there. Beautiful New England style architecture homes that are all below two and a half stories high. Um, I agree that the parcel is perfect for residential use. However, I don't think the developers should expect to have the existing codes abolished to allow them to build whatever they want. As someone brought up at the last meeting on the Zoom, that's like mo uh, moving into a no pets allowed apartment with two dogs and expecting the bylaws to be changed to accommodate what you want. Thank you for hearing my concerns. I speak for myself and many of my clientele who live in the Cherrywood development. Um, the development at Mara Parkway has been quite the talk at my salon, and it's not in favor of the development as proposed. She actually just texted me. She was considering doing a petition amongst her uh, clientele to, um, it may be too late to do that. Nonetheless, I'll just say that. Uh, I appreciate your time and look forward to an equitable and fair uh, resolution to this matter. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else in the audience here? Come on up. A little taller for a second. <laughs> hey, you might need to move that up. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Jay Leatherman. I reside at, uh, or at least I own the property at uh, uh, Six Cherry Wood Drive, which is borders the this property. So. Um, I've had the opportunity to both read uh, the attorney's letter and uh, Kathy Hirsch's letter this morning uh, that was sent to the board. And at first I was kind of upset, or not sad about that, because actually I understand, I understand what Attorney Perman was saying, but Kathy Hirsch had some very good points about this ordinance. So I do oppose this for a different, a few reasons. Um, the board, I've been attending a lot of these meetings, the board asked a question about the uh, overlay district in the zones and describing that. And after I read the letter from Kathy Hurst, it made some sense to me finally. I was going to kind of guide you, kind of, the reasons why I'm kind of upset about this. Um, the overlay district, you think about the, let's say the Constitution we have with the, uh, the Tenth Amendment. You have the Constitution that the government, federal government does everything. They have everything that's available in the Constitution. That's anything else that's not in the Constitution is given to the states. That's pretty simple. That's We all know that. That family kind of struck me because I've been involved in this for a while. I'm not, this is, I'm new to zoning, I'm new to this uh, activity. But that makes sense because the overlay district sits on top of the R30 zone. Everything else that's not explicitly stated in that overlay district is represented in the R30 zone. Now, the reason I'm kind of upset about that, because that makes sense and kind of finally kicked in, is that since my property is right next to this, um, and it's been approved, and the, uh, I was thinking, you know, I was, and Rob and I were talking, I would probably be able to sell my house and change my zone to multifamily which would be very nice. And since we were in that same meeting about four years ago when the planning department said, yes, you can do this, that's Dr. Uh, Attorney Perman said, it'd be great. We could change that. Well, I wasn't in that meeting. I'm just kind of helping set a precedence here that if you're be able to change and say that this is the R30 zone, which is the underlying zone, everything above that, which is the uh, federal uh, flexible use district, this is what you can do. If it's not explicitly stated in that, everything else, all the zone and all the other activity underneath that, that's what it falls to. So I don't, I don't, I'm opposing this because, not because we don't need residential housing, not because of uh, the activities around this. I do, I do agree there's housing in this area. It's just this area, just based on the zones, this is an area that needs to be represented correctly based upon the current guidelines that are set up. So I do oppose the 
mainly because of the multi multifamily housing that is not that's not available in our 30 zone. And like I said, if it is, I would would be nice to have all the 250 other houses that are in this flexible, flexible use district be changed to multifamily homes. That's, that's also additional homes for the neighbor, neighborhood. So I'm being very sarcastic here about this, but I really think this is setting a precedence that could be causing problems in the future. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, anybody else in the audience here wishing to speak in opposition or concern? Uh, I don't know if we have anybody online. There um, are some people online. I don't. Anybody? At this point, it's opposition or concern. I'll open up to in favor in a minute here. See anybody? No? Okay. All right, well, I'm going to keep moving with anybody here in the audience wishing to speak in favor of the plan. Come on up and uh, state your name and address for record and provide your comment. I'm Reverend Sally Newhall. I live at 33 Digital Drive, Unit 308 here in Nashua in Ward 8. Um, I sent you an email, but I sent it so late this afternoon, I don't think you got it in the list that was uh, shared, so I wanted to read it to you tonight. Okay. I'm a former pastor of Nashua Presbyterian Church. I also serve on the uh, housing justice uh, group, and uh, I'm a former president of the Nashua Area Interfaith Council. I've been concerned about housing issues in Nashua for almost a decade, the decade I've been here in Nashua as I've encountered parishioners who have had, who've lived here their whole lives and yet couldn't afford to move into rental properties because there were no rental properties that they could afford. And then began to encounter other members who had other housing issues. And so that's why I've gotten involved in caring about housing issues in Nashua. And so I was excited when in Nashua, both the housing report that came out last year and the new um, master plan for Nashua indicated that we need to have 5,000 new units developed in Nashua within, the ne within this decade that we're already um, well into. And so I was excited about the Merrick, Merrick Parkway uh, condos as they came up because it shows a real sense of moving ahead and getting more uh, denser housing that I think we're going to need in Nashua to meet that goal. I know that we're in a time of growing change in Nashua. Nashua was once just a big town in a fairly rural area, and now we're really an urban area. We have suburbs around us. We've got people who commute to Nashua now to work, and we need to begin to think differently about our housing. We have a love of parks and a love of conservation land, which we should, but we need to also look about how we can develop the housing that's needed in our city so that all of our residents can have safe and affordable housing. I just, you're in a tough place, I think, as a planning board, because you need to be leading our community in making the transition in how we think about housing and how we take care of the needs of our community. And I commend you for the work you're doing. I, like the other person who spoke, I don't envy you. Um, but I wanted to let you know how I felt about this. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, anybody else in the audience wishing to speak in favor of the plan? Okay, uh, come on up. Hi, uh, my name is Darian Glasser. I'm a resident at uh, 3 West Trade Drive. I know I'm in Ward 9, but my residence is less than three minutes and a mile away from uh, the proposed lot. So I'm here to speak in favor of the development of Merrick Partway. I talked before about the housing shortage, just echoing what uh, the previous person said, we really don't have enough housing. Um, folks are coming in, gentrifying the area, paying more than local residents can out of state, and making it so uh, people's kids and their grandkids aren't gonna be able to buy houses here. Uh, the medium density housing to be built by Marriott Place is key to providing the amount of housing Nashua needs, which it will not be able to provide with just single family houses. I'd also like to come at it from another angle too. Not only do multifamily houses provide more property, but they do so in a more energy efficient way we need to push for. According to the US Energy Administration, multifamily units like the ones made by Marriott Place or will be made by Marriott Place 
uh, have been shown to use up to 50% less energy than the standard uh, single family house to heat and cool the unit. Um, according to energy.gov, at a time when New Hampshire has the fifth highest energy prices in the nation, it's important we provide housing options for folks to let them not only live in their own house, but be able to afford to pay for heating and, heating and cooling. Uh, all in all, we need more housing. We need a lot more of it, and it's critically approved the Merit Place site plan, so we continue to get more of the housing Nashua needs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else in the audience here wishing to speak in favor of the plan? Okay. Uh, anybody else on Zoom wishing to speak? I'll say either way. Seeing anything? I don't right? have any hands raised. Okay. All right. Uh, at this point, I'll um, go ahead and close the public comment and have, but have the um, yeah, an opportunity for the applicant to provide any rebuttal or additional information regarding the public testimony here. Sure, thank you. Um, so a couple points I just want to go over. I took some notes, obviously, as, as some folks were talking. Um, there is a section in uh, the flexible use zone that speaks to the mixed use village. Again, that is not just this 20 acre parcel that this property sits on. Uh, that also includes the piece across Conant Road to the north that those elderly units are on. Um, that 80,000 square foot rule is in reference to non-residential things, okay? Uh, it's never been accounted for in terms of the existing 14 units. I don't know why we would start doing that now. Um, in terms of the scale of the buildings, if you look at the overview site plan, Linda, if you don't mind. Just real quick, when you say not accounted for with respect to the 14 it's, units, can you be clear about what yeah. are the 14 so units? So when you talk about, about if there's 80,000 square feet of gross floor area that's available in the mixed-use village, again, the mixed-use village is those two properties. The tables on the previous site plans that have come before the board and been approved have included that for non-residential uses only. Residential uses have never been included in that. That goes back to that 1999 plan uh, that had an approved 60 units in one large building. That was 66,000 gross square feet. Um, and it doesn't include any of the 14 units that exist across the street today either uh, at any point through the history of those. So to add that in now and start looking at residential as to be included in that would go against the precedent that's been set at every site plan that's ever been approved along the way. So that's why I say there's a very big distinction in that between non-residential and residential. Um, talking about the scale of these buildings, um, just looking at the drawing here, unit two is the daycare. Uh, actually, Linda, if you don't mind going to the overview plan for the very first one, maybe, or the presentation plan. Um, unit two is the daycare. Uh, unit three is, I believe, medical offices, and then unit five um, are the three of the larger and largest buildings on the property. I would say that the, when you look at the footprint of these, it certainly um, fits right in, fits right in with those. Is this the one? Um, yeah, I think it's the first one maybe in that PDF set. Yep, that one, yep. Again, again, just Looking at this, um, that light brown color that we're showing as the new proposed units, um, the daycare is off to the top left hand of the screen there. Uh, and then the building that is basically directly uh, south of the um, building A. Uh, and then not the gas station, but that next office uh, building up to uh, the screen from there. You can see it's the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. I think that is uh, the largest building. Certainly the footprint um, is in between some of the smaller buildings on site and some of these that are the build, uh, some of these that are the bigger. So um, I guess I disagree with the statement that uh, it doesn't match some of the scale that exists out there today. Um, single family homes we don't believe are appropriate on this site. I mean, you have a commercial lot essentially in a mixed use village. Um, you know, I've worked on a variety of projects in my career from the seaport in Boston to the northern woods of New Hampshire, campsites, things like that, and everything in between. A very common strategy for development is to have transitional um, density when you, when you develop these things in the flex use overlay zone. I think this, this parcel is actually a perfect example of that. You have commercial, and right now it just goes out to single family homes. Uh, a very common strategy in between that is a more dense style of housing. We've selected, 
or the applicant has selected um, townhouses because it achieves a number of goals uh, that the flex use overlay district really sets out to do, which are all somewhat competing. Um, I believe Ms. Klee made that statement at um, the last hearing as well. Um, but really what we're trying to do, and again, these are competing ideas, is provide the opportunity for development, but also protect open space, wetland resources, natural resources, all of those things. Uh, in this case, uh, the applicant certainly felt uh, that the townhouse style was a way to do that where we're not impacting any of those environmental concerns, uh, which is obviously one of the, uh, the main and fundamental goals of the FUOD. Um, I would like to make a point of clarification as well. Um, uh, Mr. Leatherman's house is uh, located at map C, lot 2588. It does not directly abut this condo parcel. There is a strip of open space land owned by the city that goes in between that property and this one. It does, however, abut the overall 20 acre parcel, uh, just a little bit more to the south um, than where this is. Again, um, knowing that that is a single family home, uh, we have added an extra landscape buffer there, uh, and we've tried to minimize the disturbance over in that area as much as possible um, it, with sensitivity to obviously what does exist over there in terms of uh, single family homes. Um, <clears throat> And uh, <coughs> that's, I think that answers and addresses the questions that I heard, um, but certainly if you folks have any more, be happy oh, to, to continue. Could, could you talk about the condo documents of this potential development versus the existing? There was comments about potential conflict or there. It, it, um, do you have a, a general, what's, what's your opinion on that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, again, Andy Perlman um, for the applicant. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have those condominium documents uh, with me tonight. I would simply say that um, anything that we do will have to be approved by the Condominium Association. And so it, it's somewhat of a civil matter outside the jurisdiction of this board, but we'll be working with the Condo Association uh, as this project goes forward. Okay. All right. So at this point, um, are you all set with your rebuttal? Yeah, okay. Um, so at this point for the board, does anybody have any further questions for the applicant or staff while we're in, still in the hearing? Ms. Harper? I, I just had, a, uh, just wanted a clarification on the condo association. Is, is this a condo association within a condo association? Uh, that, that's exactly right. I, I live in a similar setup. Um, up in Manchester, I live in I live in exactly what uh, my client wants to build. I live in a three-story townhouse. Right next to us is an apartment complex. We're, we're all part of one giant condo, but we have two separate condominiums uh, within us. So there's a master condo, and then there will be a yeah. sub condo within that master condo. I understand. I yeah. was just I just wanted to clarify yep. that that is in fact what it is. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Other questions by the board? Um, all right, hearing no more questions by the board, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close the hearing on this matter and open our meeting. So, okay, um, so we've sort of moving into the next um, sort of phase of looking at this particular development. Obviously, we've, we've gone through several discussions about it. I think everybody's pretty familiar with what's being presented. Um, definitely interested in comments and thoughts. On, you know, in this case, we're looking at the site plan, so, um, but sort of anything's on the table to talk about. Alderman Clee. Uh, thank you. I, I feel like I do a lot of talking and probably asking more questions than anything. Um, the, the comment that I want to make is probably something that I've, I've made in the past, um, and I kind of wrote it down so I didn't lose my train of thought here. One of the things I hear us talk about um, here in everywhere actually is that we do need more housing and and without a doubt we need more housing in the city um, but I always have to ask the same question to what end we talk about the master plan and the master plan says add housing um, but then the master plan also says add commercial property and so on so we can use either one to, to justify it but one of the questions that I have quite often is we need more housing 
but do we just say yes because we need more housing? Do we look at it and look at, well, single family homes, well, I know it was brought up, may not be appropriate for this, but that would still add housing, maybe not as much housing as a townhouse would. So um, I, I do have concerns about the continuation of adding density, density, density. Um, the nice thing about Nashua, and one of the things that I had spoken to a, a previous um, uh, community director was that we want to have um, a lot of different types of things. So when we look in, in our downtown area, we, we have some lower income housing, but we also have some very, ex you know, trying to get more expensive housing. Some people call it gentrification, I call it um, kind of mixing so that we don't have a, 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 a all low income area. Well, it's the same thing that I, I look at this. I, I would like to see more housing in there, but do I want to see it to the point where it's it's dense and it's creating issues for other people and so on. So I, I'm still on the fence with this, but I don't want us to just fall back to say, well, we need more housing, therefore we give it a rubber stamp and we approve it. And I never think that this board would do that. So please don't anybody feel that that's kind of what I'm saying. But I don't want us just to jump on the fact that we need housing and therefore we, um, we, we will approve it. But I do want to hear more of what other people have to say. So thank you for letting me have this time. Sure. Mr. Barley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I mean, I think you raise a, a legitimate question about the fact that there are obviously there are competing interests in the master plan. Um, <laughs> there, there are competing interests in the master plan and I think it's appropriate to balance those different interests and I agree, and I think there was a reference made to, to, to spot zoning, you know, that we don't just say yes, because there's a general need within the master plan without considering the context in which, in which the application is being made. I, I mean, from my perspective, you know, and I'm not saying that anybody has to agree with me, but I would view this as a fairly ideal location for the type of development that's being proposed, and, and there's a couple of reasons I would say that. I mean, one is, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the, the technicalities of, of, you know, the, the zoning ordinance and, and the application of the FEOD, but, but it seems to me, you know, that the FEOD was put in place in part to allow for a different type of development than, than would have otherwise been permitted in this zone. So, you know, the FEOD sits over R30 and I believe R40. I asked have to have clear for that. Mm -hmm. So the you know, the existing single family houses that are within that FUOD also, you know, also don't, you know, the, one of the uh, abutters raised the point, you know, they, they don't comply with the underlying zoning requirements. And so I think there was, you know, an intentional decision that was made here with this district to allow for, you know, a different type of housing. You know, additionally, um, to the applicant's point, within the, the contours of the FEOD specifically, this allows for this sort of transitional housing. You've got, you know, commercial retail uses in that business district. You know, this would provide for these, you know, uh, admittedly upscale, but, but townhouses, um, you know, attached townhouses and into the single family zone. And, and you, if, you, if you just look at an aerial view of, of Nashville, I mean, you go about a mile down the road and you've got almost precisely the same thing where you've got you know absent the retail uses but certainly with the you know with attached condos sitting right next to single family housing developments and it seems to me that 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 works quite well um and you know it, I, I think the concept here is very similar um so you know, I, again, in, in my view, not that it has to be anybody else's, but I think this is, this is a pretty ideal location for this type of development. So I think not only does it meet the, the particular goals of the master plan or, or housing, but it, it seems to me this is, this is the right type of area. And I guess the one other point that we talked about, you know, at some length in the last meeting is that this is a portion of the site that has just sat vacant for 30 years. There has been no commercial development here. This is an opportunity to do this in a site that's that's vacant, that's that's not being used for any other purpose. It's it's not something that has been determined that, that you know could be better used for some other purpose, and it also meets that goal under the master plan of of providing additional housing that we need. So, for all those reasons, I would be supportive of this site plan. 
Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'll just add a couple things. Having been pretty intimately involved with the master plan, obviously, um, for the city, you know, several of the kind of similar parcels or areas of the city, I'm thinking like uh, Daniel Webster, you know, which is very, we spent a lot of time in the master plan talking about that particular site um, and, you know, exactly what sort of came out of the discussions which had a lot of input from hundreds of people in the city um, was, yeah, kind of a transitional row homes, kind of townhomes development, which would buffer between sort of the airport and the single family, right? And, and, and even, you know, in the last couple of you know, meetings, public meetings with the sort of Elm Street redevelopments and things like that. Again, it's, we keep seeing this concept of transitioning between single family to some more density and then whether it's park industrial or commercial or whatever on the, it's like it's, it, it becomes like this border, you know, in between the two of them. And I can't, I can't fathom, you know, six, big homes or something <laughs> in that site I'm not it that to me would be very odd looking because you'd, you'd be literally you know jammed in between a doctor's office and a daycare and pizza shops and yeah you know, it just seems very odd to have just a few homes in that site and I would sort of echo the one point that Mr. Varley made about um, you know the flexible use overlay the way it was designed I think it was designed well and I think the fact that they included the ability for the planning board to to sort of adapt what is happening on the site over time because I you know obviously people putting things together in the 80s can't know exactly what's going to happen in 2020 um, you know they were very smart I think to put sort of more authority within the document there that created this district for it to be adaptable. And to me, this is pretty much a prime example of adaptability. Um, so that's kind of just where I'm coming at it. Um, is um, it seems like the best use of the site to me, you know, and if it could have been commercial, I just don't, I don't understand how like 30 years of nothing, I, I mean, I feel like commercial wouldn't let that happen if there was any real viability there for the site to be. And, and to be honest, there's a, you know, that little restaurant that's in the front of the site. I mean, I live there. It's, it's been under construction and not started for almost 10 years. So like even that one little, building hasn't been able to come online <laughs> you know so I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about the viability of the of the the actual retail part of that particularly as Amazon's and other things come along if there isn't more sort of people right there in that in that very close area to some of those businesses you know, that's just my two cents again thank you yeah Anybody else? Mr. Hudson? Yeah, I, I echo a lot of the, uh, the points made. I, I, there's been a lot of discussion about what, what's allowed or not allowed based upon previous plans, you know, from a while ago, and I, I understand that. Um, I haven't heard a lot of specific objections necessarily to the proposal itself. Um, you know, beyond the fact that it shouldn't be shouldn't be allowed because of the type of a development it is, but I do believe the applicant tried to make a uh, find some sort of a balance. Um, I think we'd seen some previous iterations or concepts which had just a couple of couple of buildings with many more units in them. I think that would have been more out of character. Um, the transitional nature of this, I think uh, the plan kind of. Uh, try tries to to do that. I I am disappointed that the businesses in the area appear at least a, a couple of them that have spoken are not in favor of this. I think 
they'll really benefit from this development having um, residential there that is proximate to their businesses a lot of people work from home it'll be a quick walk over to the market to grab something or that sort of thing I think uh, I think this this um, use in that area given the fact that we haven't seen uh, the commercial growth or, or commercial uh, this to be commercially viable uh, given the time that's passed um, I think they'll really benefit from that um, residential in that area um, I think it's well buffered from the, the single-family residences uh, regardless you know I was doing some quick scaling off the map it looks like you know it's 150 50 feet or more uh, from most of them um, most all of them uh, you know kind of a natural buffer so um, I think it you know give it even given what it is I think it's well buffered uh, relative to the uses uh, that, that about it so um, for those for those reasons I think I agree that it's a I, I, I agree with the people too that they that I don't envy us either to have to make this decision unfortunately we've apparently we've been granted uh, some fairly unique powers in this situation and it's really to us to <coughs> try to find the balance and make a judgment about you know is this appropriate proposal or not and um, in thinking th through all the aspects and having heard all the testimony, I think I feel that it is. Okay. What else? Come, Mr. Varley. And Mr. Chair, thank you. I just I did want to just address one more technical point too. We started discussion before we even you know heard from from the applicant about you know, assessing whether we had the basis to accept jurisdiction of the plan. Um, and you know, obviously, we ultimately did accept jurisdiction. So I just wanted to speak briefly to um, you, know, you know the point that, that gets to that you know, Mr. Huston was just describing in terms of the authority that the the board has here. Um, and having discussed this in the context of you know accepting jurisdiction and, and having reviewed it, I I agree with with the the, the staff assessment that the that the board does have the authority um, to, to vary the underlying, um, you know, R30 zoning requirements on the basis of the provision in the flexible use district. And I have had the opportunity to review the site plan suitability report that was submitted by the applicant and based on that report, which largely, you know, reflects the discussion that we've just been having. Um, I agree that there is a, you know, a valid basis for, for allowing, you know, what, what would qualify as multifamily housing here. So I think that is a, you know, that is a, a valid basis on which, um, you know, we can permit multifamily housing. Okay. Alderman Clee. Thank you, um, and and I hope I didn't miss my opportunity, but I, I do kind of have a. A question, I think, for staff, if that's okay. We can talk to staff. There. Thank you. Um, one one of the uh, speakers m made a comment about that they would be able to take their property and split it up and create this high density, and that all 250 properties there could do the same. Um, uh, and and then they kind of gave the indication that it would, it was just, a, and it would be an accepted practice um, without do that. Is is that accurate and correct? Uh, that is not accurate because that property is not within the flexible use overlay district. Um, it is only through the powers of the overlay that uh, the underlying can be modified to permit the multifamily. Um, there was a, a note uh, that called that into question uh, that this is only an overlay and therefore it's fully subject to the underlying requirements. Um, however, when this ordinance was drafted, um, using uh, I-2 as we've discussed, uh, it gives the board the full authority through the overlying district to modify the underlying. Um, so that, that point is uh, basically null and void uh, through the powers that were uh, enshrined in the ordinance itself. Thank you, I, I really, I do appreciate that. And as I'm looking at this, I see that this property does go within the R-40, the R-30, and a little bit of the R-9. I think is as far as underlying, but the particular one in question where they're wanting to build is an underlying of R30. Is that correct? 
I, I believe so. I, I don't have the map in front of me, okay. but unless it I'm has, just making sure that I'm reading this accurately. <laughs> unless it, it is overlain by the FUOD, it, it cannot support multifamily without a variance from the zoning board. Okay. And just to clarify that point, because I mean, I, I'm just just so I understand, because I'm looking at the yeah, me too. the zoning map yeah. here. So, as I understand it, at least a substantial portion of the the single family houses that are in the, the, the Cherrywood development are within the FUOD? Then theoretically they could, um, the, using this exact same process, But they um, would have to go come for before multi. the planning board and, and they would have to seek relief. Site plan and, and site suitability report and, and the exact same process that the applicant is going through tonight, they would have to do the same thing. Yeah. So, so the one other thing that I was thinking about was, um, you know, it's this idea of balance, right? Um, so, and I think we talked about this in an earlier meeting. If these were, this is literally the smallest number of units you can make to be called multifamily, the way our ordinances are written. So, like, a, in, correct me if I'm wrong, but a three unit is not considered multifamily for us. And I believe it yeah. is. I believe that yeah. it's, it's duplex is. Or oh, duplex, it is yeah. Not. So like we're three you know, or more. Okay, so it's three or more. So, so we're we're down close to about the smallest <laughs> multifamily that you could physically do, right? I mean, it's, and we did this to to Mr. Hudson's point. This is, I think, the third iteration that I've seen in the last eighteen months or whatever, starting from a hundred and. 40 or something, 160, <laughs> 160, you know, I mean, so we're from 160 in one building to four. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's a pretty major, it, it's not like it hasn't changed a lot. I mean, it, it, it really did. So, I mean, it's just that that's that balance thing, you know, it's, it, it's gone a long way. And I, I think to, to the benefit of everybody, this process of, you know, albeit as painful as it might seem, it to me seems successful because it's over time and angst and public feedback and back and forth with the board. We've gone from 160 unit large facility to, you know, relatively small compared to what we see. We see much, much larger. Um, you know, condo developments to a pretty small one in terms of just scale for the city. Um, so I, I, to me, the process has worked is all I'm trying to get to is that we, there's been a lot of changing as a result of public input and the board listening to it and the applicant listening to it and things being changed. So, Maybe. Alderman Clee. Thank, thank you again uh, for allowing me to speak. Um, I, I too have some concerns that for 30 years nothing has has been there, um, and for for some people that might say feel good that it's just been open space. But um, to the concerns of that someone could come in and try to do that, there was the Hannafords and so on, and and I know the cons and I I've gone back and tried to read as much as I can on it, and I did see all the different iterations that you guys have have been uh, living with, so to speak, over the 18 months. Um, the the, the question of the Hannafords was it had been a smaller store, a smaller footprint. They felt it wasn't possible. Um, as a person who was in a not very good accident right there at that intersection um, there, I'm always concerned about the traffic. And the person just came barreling out and turned our big truck, mm -hmm. spun it around and off the road. So um, I, I do understand that. Traffic is getting bad everywhere. I don't after reading everything I can, I don't see these these housing units um, adding that much more traffic, nothing more than a Hannaford's would have, um, because that would have been um, more that. So I, I do think that based on the large amount of housing that was originally planned, this is kind of scaled down a bit. Um, I, I see it as a, as a good, I would personally, I would love to just see the um, single family homes, but I do understand the applicant's comments about that this site just would not be uh, pertinent to it. And after listening to my colleagues here, I am more 
apt to uh, want to go with approving something like this. But um, again, I'd love to hear more people speaking. Thank you. Thanks. Any other comments, anybody? Mr. Hirsch? I, I just feel it, it's just a very good plan, given the neighborhood to transition from commercial to more residential, uh, the lack of traffic and all that. The area is not viable for uh, commercial development. Uh, retail office is just not gonna work in that location. The, the world's changed in the last 30 years. We used to have three and 4,000 square foot drugstores. We don't really, by and large, have them anymore. Uh, the supermarkets have gone from being 20,000 square feet to 80,000 square feet. I mean, the whole world has changed, so it just isn't a viable site for any kind of commercial development. But, and I think the, the, uh, the scale of this project is going to work very well. Okay. Other comments? Well, how do people feel about, I mean, there was a little bit of discussion about the, um, I mean, it seems like the well and markers, they decided they, I mean, I don't, it was things like that we talked about. We talked about trail connections. Does anybody feel strongly either way on any of that stuff? Or? Uh, Go ahead, Alderman Clean. Again, thank you uh, for indulging me. If I remember correctly, there was some comment at, at the previous meeting, um, and maybe I'm getting my, my um, properties confused. I thought there was going to be, um, th it wasn't gonna allow for a pass through to the trails, was I mistaken on that? Because I thought I heard the applicant or, or the applicant's representative say that um, there, there would be um, still access to the trails and so on. And it, I think what I heard was, the, you know, the way it's laid out right now, you'd kind of have to walk along the, um, the parking lot of the, of the um, dental office that's right. kind of right there it's to get there, to yeah. the trail. But the applicant was amenable to sort of a little windy one through the. It's kind of a, goes down a little bit of a hill into into like there's an asphalt path there actually right. that connects from the, where the, dental office slash cat doctor, right. over to Cherrywood, but, you know it's whether we, want there to be a connection from this site to that asphalt path. Or are we okay with it just walking down the, you know, because you can get there obviously just walking in th in on the street and going going in between the dental office and the cat doctor. That's a, that's a roadway there, so you can get there. So, if if yeah. I may. Yep. Um, again, I I I'm still learning the the board's mm -hmm. right of what they can and cannot request and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be just. As a personal, I, w I would like to see it be as easy as possible for those that want to walk without having to go out on the street, without having to do that. Um, I, um, as, as a person who has Walden Pond within our, um, and Thoreau's Landing within my, my district, um, one of the things is to get from point A to point B, you almost have to, you go through their property and, and the people who live there don't like strangers coming through and, mm -hmm. and so on. So. I, I would feel more comfortable if it were put that yes, they'd be amenable to allowing this pass through and not um, mm -hmm. kind of um, eventually putting up a roadblock and saying, I don't want any um, strangers coming through, we feel unsafe and, and so on. So I, I don't know if that's within our authority um, um, or is it just, we can just ask them nicely to, to do well, it. They, so. we, we did ask and they said it was, they okay. already said they were amenable to it. So okay. I think it's okay if, if we want it. I mean, there is a, that entire area, Maplewood has a trail system. Right, yes. So, and as laid out on here, <laughs> there's not a physical connection to the trail system except going out onto the, the road. road. It's, it's a, the, but the trail system does go through the property. So it would only be sort of between the, the housing and the, and the edge of the, their own property. So, or their own condo line, I should say, it's not a property line. But, so and if I, we wanted that, we could, right. we could stipulate that. You know? Yeah, I apologize for not having walked yeah. it myself, but yeah. I, I would like it to make it as easy as possible for those that are trying yeah. to get through without feeling like they're trespassing. Um, and as I said, you yeah. know, um, I understand the, the people who are going to live there are going to want to be safe and not feel like they have strangers just walking through their property, so to speak, or their association. But mm -hmm. um, if we could stipulate something like that, I, I would just personally feel more comfortable. 
Yeah, and, and we can have them sort of work with staff to yes. come up with the best solution. That's not that's not an issue. We don't need it a. Keeps everybody we safe. don't. We, yeah, we don't need to come up with an exact way of doing it. Thank you. Um, and I guess for staff, the wetland markers are, are they required in that area anyway? I so. Okay, so that's not they would be required anyway. So probably that's not a big deal. Other thoughts, Ms. Harper? Um. I just wanted to say that I also think that this project was very well thought out and and created responsibly in this particular neighborhood. And um, I, I do uh, agree um, with Alderman Clee that um, I think I would like to see access to the trailhead just, you know, as good faith and integration into the neighborhood. Okay. Any other comments while we're in the meeting? Somebody want to make a motion? I have, I have one here. Yeah. 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 Mr. Varley. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would make a motion to approve uh, old business. Site Plan Project A22 0182, Merritt Place LLC owner, uh, proposed site plan located at 8 Merritt Parkway. And that would be with the finding that the um, plan does meet the requirements outlined in Site Plan NRL Section 190 146D and Section 19025. Um, and that will have a total of 17 stipulations. Um, although I may need some help confirming that these 16. are still uh, still valid. Um, the first uh, stipulation is a waiver request uh, for a waiver from Section 190-279 EE um, with respect to uh, showing existing conditions on the plan. Um, that will read is granted. Will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. Uh, Stipulations two through six um, shall read as written in the staff report. Um, stipulation number seven, do we have an outstanding engineering letter? Thank yes. You. September 12th? Yes. September 12th, okay. Uh, stipulation number seven will be completed to read prior to the chair signing the plan. All comments in a letter from Joe Mandola, senior staff engineer dated September 12th, 2022, shall be addressed to the satisfaction of the Division of Public Works. Um, Stipulations 8 through 16 to read as written in the staff uh, report. And then I, I guess I just just a question for for uh, the board generally as to the condition. I'm going to add a stipulation regarding the, the trail. The trailhead. Um, you know, I'm just, I guess I'm just inquiring as to what we would ask in terms of the timing for that. Uh, would, would we? say or prior think, to the issuance of the final CO? Well, I think it'd probably be prior to signing the plan, right? So they can actually put it in the, put it on the plan before it, before it gets signed off. Because it would just be a plan mod. Is, am, is, am I thinking correctly on that step? That would work. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, so um, I will add a new stipulation number 17. that will say prior to the chair signing the plan, um, the applicant will work with planning and engineering staff to um, uh, develop a proposal and to document on the plan uh, a, a trail con connection to the existing uh, trail network in the Maplewood subdivision with uh, the applicant's site. Okay. All right, so we have that motion to approve with the 17 stipulations as indicated by Mr. Barley. Um, Sorry, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Just, just one quick question for staff. I don't, I don't believe as to the, um, the authority that that we're exercising under, um, Flexmeets over at Overlay District to permit the multifamily. That, that's not a. We don't need to grant a waiver. In there, do we? Or, so this this is referring to that the discussion before taking jurisdiction of whether or not you want to exercise the, uh, the modification authority through the. Uh, MU overlay district um, if you want to do that uh, you should articulate that 
or uh, uh, concur with the applicant's reasoning uh, that that is not necessary uh, and that everything submitted by the applicant is sufficient for for taking jurisdiction and uh, granting uh, the site plan as proposed. Right. So I, I, I guess I, I will, as, as part of my motion, confirm um, that in my motion I would like to uh, indicate that uh, the motion would be the understanding that, that the board would be exercising its authority under um, or pursuant to sorry, section 190-25 I2 of the Natural Land Use Code um, that permits us to modify the uh, potential density and other regulations of the underlying R30 zone here to permit uh, multifamily housing where it would not otherwise be permitted in the R30 zone. Okay. All right, so we have that full motion with that last bit added by Mr. Barley um, to approve with those um, 17 stipulations and the understanding um, as indicated do or stated. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Hirsch. Any further discussion by the board? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. That motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm going to continue to move on with our uh, agenda. Um, as I can find it. So next up, I have. Um, well, we have a couple of motions that we need. Um, I'm going to go back to, or the next thing being, new business. Uh, Conditional Special Use Permit Case A22-0240. This is Bellens Inc. Uh, Hitesh Punjabi applicant. This is uh, application and an acceptance of proposed conditional use permit to allow synthetic nicotine electronic smoking device store and lounge within 1,000 feet of a school. It's located at 14B Railroad Square. So the applicant has requested to continue this application to the 5th, Scott, that's the correct date, 5th of January for the, um, this is A22-240, the um, 14B Railroad Square. Uh, yes, uh, that is requested to be continued to uh, January 5th. Okay, so I just need a motion to continue that. I just, have a, yep. uh, I just have a question. I will be recusing myself from that. So mm -hmm. do I need to sit down while you're talking about this? Or can I stay here? Um, I don't think you you can recuse from the any. You don't need to go anywhere if we're just going to make that motion. I don't okay. think. Yeah, and we're not making a substantive motion. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. But would somebody want to give that motion to continue this A twenty two dash zero two forty to January fifth, Mr. Peterson? No. Yep. I'd like to make a motion that we table A twenty two dash zero two forty until the date of January fifth. 2023. All right, and it's just a continuance. Right, the, just, uh, to continue. just to clarify. Just to clarify. Yeah, okay. So uh, we've got that motion to continue from Mr. Peterson. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Hirsch. Any further discussion by the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion passes, and that's uh, six of us. So, um, and then regarding um, new business subdivision plan, this is case A22. Dash zero one five nine, Ryzen and Homes Elite LLC. Um, this particular case was postponed till tonight, but again has been requested by the applicant to be further um, continued or postponed to January fifth. So, is somebody willing to make that motion? Again, just the same comment that I'll be recusing myself from this one. So okay, I will right. be voting anyway. So, would somebody like Ms. Harper? Uh, yes, I'd like to make a motion to continue case A22-0159 to the January 5th, 2023 meeting. Okay, so we have that motion to continue A22-0159 by Ms. Harper to January 5, 2023. Do we have a second on that? I know not to say. A second? Second by Mr. Hirsch. 
Uh, any further discussion by the board? All those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passes what? six zero. It Excuse me, this is one of the neighbors in La on Lund Street. Why is this not being told to the neighbors at, at the beginning of the meeting? We've been sitting here for two and a half hours now, waiting for this. Yeah, we're, not, we're, well, we're not on that case yet. We're, we're getting close. <laughs> as soon as you're done talking, I'm going to bring it up. So <laughs> it's the last one on my agenda. So. Uh, new business subdivision plan. So next on the agenda, this is case number A22-0227. This is RAK Construction Services LLC owner. This is an application and acceptance of a proposed two lot subdivision. This property is located at 60 Lund Road. Um, so for the board, has anybody had a chance to take a look at this application and want to make a motion as to whether it's ready for Everybody? Mr. Hirsch. Uh, move, move to take uh, jurisdiction on uh, new business project A22 0227. Okay. Uh, 61 Street. All right. So we have a motion to take jurisdiction of A22 0227 by Mr. Hirsch. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Peterson. Uh, any further discussion on jurisdiction? All those in favor of taking jurisdiction? Aye. Aye. Opposed, none. That motion passes. So we have jurisdiction of A22-0227. And we have somebody from the applicant that wants to present this case. Go ahead. Good yeah. evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Ethan Beals. I'm a project manager at Hainer Swanson doing business at 3 Congress Street here in Nashville, New Hampshire. Here tonight seeking subdivision approval for a one into two lot subdivision. I'll provide a quick overview of the project and then be happy to answer any questions that you may have. The okay. subject site is located at 60 Lund Street here in Nashville and is known to the assessor's office as map 102, lot 216. The property measures approximately 0 0.238 acres in size and falls within the RB zoning district. The site is abutted by Lund Street to the west and single family uses on all sides. The site contains 150 feet of frontage along Lund Street and contains an existing one and a half story residential dwelling in the southerly portion of the site, an in-ground pool in the center of the property, and a detached garage and shed in the northern end of the property. It is important to note that the original property was generally in poor condition. The garage and house had fallen into disrepair. Vegetation on the property was generally overgrown, and there's a significant amount of trash and debris in the property. Access to the existing site is provided via two curb cuts onto Lund Street. One provides access to the garage in the back of the property, and a second provides access to a small dirt and gravel hard packed driveway adjacent to the existing dwelling. Because the existing lot contains a house, detached garage, large pool with associated concrete apron, and detached garage and shed, the existing lot contains 56% open space as it sits. The subject site uh, contains relatively flat topography and generally slopes to the south and rear um, property boundaries. No wetlands are present in the site and the existing building is currently serviced by public sewer, water by Penetruck Waterworks, gas and overhead electric and telecommunication utilities. If you wouldn't mind switching to the proposed sheet three. Um, it is proposed to subdivide the existing lot 216 into two new lots which will be known as 216 and lot 243. New lot 216 will measure 0 0.119 acres and contain the existing residential dwelling, keeping 60 Lund Street as its address. And the new lot 243 will also measure 0.119 acres and contain a proposed two-story dwelling and be addressed at 58 Lund Street. At the July 26, 2022 City of Nashville Zoning Board meeting, the Zoning Board granted four variances for the project, a minimum lot area variance, variance and a minimum lot depth variance um, for each proposed lot. Currently, my client is actively cleaning up the property. Much of the overgrown vegetation has been cut back. There have been general repairs to the existing dwelling on the property. For safety, the existing pool has been raised and the garage is being prepped for demolition. In addition to the general repairs to the existing dwelling, we are proposing to construct a formal paved driveway in the same location as the, as the existing gravel driveway um, to provide formal off-street parking for this unit. A new two-story single-family dwelling will be constructed upon new, new lot 243. 
the, currently the design is showing a two-car garage driveway in the same location as the, as the existing driveway, um, along with utility services and associated site improvements. As you know, um, though, uh, on the plan that we're showing today, we are showing that, that two-car garage and existing two-story dwelling. Uh, the purpose of, of kind of the lot grading and plan for a subdivision is to show the intended location of the proposed dwelling and demonstrate that the proposed lot can support the, 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 the proposed unit given the setbacks, topography, utilities, et cetera. Um, and and at, at the time of construction, the developer does reserve the right to make minor tweaks in, in the layout, utility, location, configuration, et cetera. Um, typically, these, these details are finalized at the time of a foundation permit. With regards to stormwater, due to the large amount of, due to the significant amount of impervious area currently existing on the site, there's actually a slight reduction in impervious area that is proposed as part of this project. Once developed, lot 216 will contain 53% open space, and lot 243 will contain 61% open space, both of which are well above the open space minimum in the RB zone of 35%. Furthermore, we are proposing two small um, roof infiltration units in the rear of each of the proposed units um, that will infiltrate runoff, roof runoff from the unit back into the ground. In summary, it's our opinion that the reduction of impervious surface coupled with the proposed roof infiltration units improves the existing conditions on the site today and complies with the stormwater regulations for redeveloped sites in the Nashville Land Use Code. We are requesting three waivers tonight that were detailed in a waiver letter dated November 16th, which I ask be incorporated by reference, and I'll briefly summarize the three requests. Um, the first waiver is related to the construction of sidewalks along the property's frontage. Currently, no sidewalk exists in this stretch of Lund Street. Um, my client is offering to make an in lieu of contribution in the amount of $5,700, which was calculated based on the, the City of Nashua calculation for, for in lieu of sidewalk in lieu of fees. Um, the second waiver is related to existing condition survey being performed within a, uh, within a, within a thousand square feet, uh, excuse me, a thousand feet of the site. And the third waiver is to allow overhead electric and telecommunication utilities to service the proposed property, which is consistent with the neighborhood. As I mentioned, the justification for these requests are detailed in greater detail in the waiver letter, um, but I, I don't want to spend the time to read it with respect to your time. In summary, we believe this application is complete and conforms with the subdivision plan regulations. We feel that the property is being developed in a responsible manner and will provide additional housing at a time that it is very much needed in the city. Um, with regards to the staff report, um, we did receive, on condition number five, we did receive engineering comments. I had the chance to go through them um, in the last couple days, and I'm confident that we will be able to work solutions on all of the comments um, to the satisfaction of the engineering office. Um, additionally, regarding condition number nine, I, I would like to ask the, the board's consideration in potentially rewording the timing of that condition. Um, though it is certainly my, clearance, my client's um, intent to demolish the existing garage and shed on the new lot and will need to do so in order to construct a, a new unit. Um, the exact timing of which has yet to be determined. Um, he is eager to record a legal subdivision land plan and is concerned that the timing of the demolition could potentially hold that process up. So if there is any consideration of the board, we're not opposed to the comment, just the specific timing of it with regards to the recording of the legal plan. Um, I would appreciate the consideration, and if not, we, we will adjust to try to make it work. All the other conditions in the staff report are acceptable. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board may have at this time. Um, just for number nine, what would, what timing would you propose other than plan record? We're, we're, we're really, we're, we're amenable to anything. Um, just the, the, the goal of, of my client is to get that legal subdivision recorded. Um, I, I don't know, I mean, having it at the time of CO seems not necessarily the best because we would need to, we, the, the buildings are gonna be and need to be demolished either way. We, I'm just asking if there's any other, any consideration could be possible to not hold up the subdivision plan. Well, I think the important thing the plan exactly as it's going to look after they're demolished to show that that's the most mm. you know what I'm saying so in other words you're giving us a plan showing the lot without any buildings if that's the way it's ultimately going to be and then we can record the plan and then we can demolish the building C correct me if I, I'm wrong but the, the subdivision is really the underlying um, land plan so really how it 
Sure. Uh, Mr. Hudson? Yep. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's clarification for staff. I remember at least one previous case where we were doing a subdivision and there was a house that had to get moved or some provision needed to be made to ensure that was going to happen. Um, uh, in this case, you know, um, I don't see a housing structure that, cro that uh, crosses the line, but I don't think we can create a subdivision that uh, has a nonconformity to the requirements in terms of a house being on a line or something like that, right? Like this has a pool which abuts, so we create two lines and I don't know what the effect of that is if the pool needs to be demolished because it crosses the line or, or if it would be, wouldn't need to be with some other agreement or easement or something in place. Do you need to cross a property line with it? The, the, the buildings and the structures that will be demolished, no, no, neither, neither of which the two structures, which are the garage and the shed, are in the location of the proposed property line. I'm not, I'm, truthfully, I'm not trying to make this a, a sticking point. If that's the will of the board, I totally understand it. I, I was simply asking for potential sure. consideration as the priority is to get a plan recorded. Yeah, I mean, we can talk to staff and see what we can come up yeah, with. And yeah. if, it's, if it's allowable, I have no objection. I guess. Okay. All right, yeah. we'll, we'll look into it. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Klee. Uh, th thank you very much. I just for clarification, you already said that the pool has been raised and, and all of that. Correct. That would have probably been the only piece that would have crossed the property line. Is that correct? Th that, that is correct. Everything the, else okay. is within its own property line. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, are there questions of the applicant by the board? Uh, all right. Just, just a comment. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. So Hudson. It's a little punchy, but I, um, this applicant received the comments the same day that a previous application did. I, com the applicant didn't yell at me. <laughs> um, yeah. the, his plan is very complete. We had five comments on it, despite the fact that there's many more pages in the other application. The other application, we had three times as many comments on one, on one application uh, page. So I just want to note that for the record. And I also want to note for the record that if anybody didn't notice, there was a holiday last week. Yes. So we had two two days we weren't working, and uh, Mr. Madola also had some uh, time out of the office for the other remaining three days. So there were uh, mitigating factors to the fact that a couple of these were later than what we would like, for sure. Okay, understood. All right, I'm not hearing any uh, questions for the applicant by the board. Um, I'll go ahead and open to the public is there anybody wishing to speak in opposition concern I have a question of the plan I think there was somebody online right right is there anybody online that wants to speak to the plan against uh, Petra yes yep go ahead we have actually hello my can, name is Petra Ingram I also have Steve Nakunas okay can you state your um, address for the record please yep Petra, I'm, I live on 61 Lund Street. Got it. Thanks. Joe at 64 Lund Street. Okay. Yep, yeah, go ahead if you've got a question or a comment. Yep. Yeah. You can also add Kelly Evans. I live at 59 oh, Lund Street. Okay. Yeah, I'll just take one at a time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we'll start with Petra, maybe, whoever that is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I actually downloaded the staff report and I wanted to get the plans, but both PDFs were the same. And then one of your staff members sent me the plan. So thank you for that. Okay. But both PDFs online were actually the staff report. And I didn't see any attachment uh, regarding the comments of the engineer, Joe Mandola. They were not attached to the letter. So I don't know what those comments were, first of all. And neither were the comments from Mark Ripaglia, the investor, inspector, investigator. So none of them were attached to the staff report. So we don't know what those comments were. So I would like to get clarification on those, please. OK, yeah, I think there's just a few. We might be able to just read them off yeah, in a minute. Yep. Any other comment or question? Yeah, on the um, on the proposed plan, 
on the existing structure, there's currently a, uh, it's not just a gravel area, it's basically a, a concrete uh, runway to the side porch. And then to the right of that is uh, what used to be a grassed in area, which the previous occupant uh, decided to use to run his car up every once in a while. So that's what they consider the driveway. But there is actually still a, a concrete one runway to the side porch. Okay. Um, even even uh, so, the uh, uh, the proposed uh, driveway plan here, uh, there wasn't any mention of a of a paved driveway. It talked about a uh, a dirt driveway, which is it, which is what it is right now. So obviously there was a change somewhere along the line. Okay. Well, we can have them clarify what that is. Sure. And they now used to be a driveway. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, um, on the uh, the proposed uh, new dwelling uh, utilities, we're, we're, we're looking at uh, areas where we have to make some saw cuts in the road in order to carry uh, uh, water and uh, and sewer. Okay. And gas. Yep. Um, I, I thought there was a moratorium on uh, roadways created within a certain time frame that uh, that we had a limitation on uh, road cuts. Ours, please. We can we can ask about that. Sure. Yep. Yeah, our our street was repaved about a year and a half ago. Okay, I I can't have different people talking because we when we're recording the information, nobody's going to know who it was. So well, that's fine. <laughs> try to go it, it, one. The, the, the state the statement is correct though that the the, the roadway was paid uh, uh, just a year and a half ago. Okay. Great. And could, my just, question about the uh, uh, the saw cuts, you know, to carry utilities to the uh, the proposed dwelling is something potentially in conflict yep. with that. Okay, we'll ask about that. And just for clarification, sir, could you just state your name Steve and address? Narcuna. Steve Narcuna, 64 Lund Street. Okay, great. Thanks. And then, if you're all set, the um, there was another woman that. Comes up as Galaxy. Yes, my yep. name is Kelly Evans. Okay. I live at 59 Lund Street. Okay, go ahead. And directly across from the area that they're planning on putting the new housing in. Yep. Um, looking at the site plan, there looks like there's going to be a two story dwelling and a garage. Okay. Is this correct? Um, that's what it looks like to me, but um, the applicant is taking notes on your questions and he'll be coming back up to answer some of them in a, in a minute. Yep. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, uh, Steve Arcunas again, 64 Lund Street. Yep. Um, is there, you know, we talk about water infiltration, uh, water drainage. Uh, I would imagine that, you know, as far as roof system is a concern, you're talking about gutters to carry water away into the uh, uh, the latter part of the uh, the parcel. Uh, but I guess um, is that also going to be true for the existing structure? And what kind of water infiltration are we talking about? Yeah, you know, we're talking about carrying the water away from the uh, the structures themselves. But how does that influence any of the uh, the abutting properties? Yeah, I can ask him to talk about it, but he, he did mention there was two new rock infiltration units. But I'll I'll have the um, applicant clarify. Yep. Yeah, could you clarify what your rock infiltration units are? If they had dry wells or something of that nature that are going to be uh, dug and placed on the property to carry water, that's that's all I need to know. Okay, we'll ask that question. Again, this is Kelly Evans, 59 Lund Street. Okay. Um, it, you know, the, the gentleman that's been working on the property has done an awesome job looking at it, though. It fe seems very unlikely a two-story dwelling and a garage would fit onto that small parcel. Um, is, is this the plan we're going with? Um, well, the way it works with a residential subdivision is, is the plan shows what potentially could be there to showing to show a fit but um, there isn't a requirement to show the actual house itself and what it might look like but um, the applicants listening and um, he might be able to provide some additional information for you here and, and just if I if I could add to that mm -hmm. any any dwelling that would go on 
property would otherwise have to meet all of the zoning criteria. Right. Yep. I'm okay. sorry, I couldn't hear that. Uh, you were just saying that any of the anything that is built on the site would have to meet the zoning criteria that was agreed to in the zoning meeting. So, yeah. And they proposed a variance because the area was technically too small. Um, I understand Correct. there was a variance, yes, granted for this. By yes, the, we, by we zoning. That. Yep. 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 Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I'll uh, one, more, one more. Go ahead. You are muted. No. Oh, no, not. I can hear you. Uh, okay. Steve Narcunas, uh, 64 Long Street. Yeah. Um, is, is, is the electrical going to be uh, aerial or, uh, or on the ground? It's overhead is what's proposed. It is overhead. Yep. Okay. And the same thing with communications as well, correct? Correct. That's what's on the plan. Yep. All right. Yep. And okay. are you going to? Um, yep. What's your name? Yeah. Oh, this is Patron sixty one Lund Street. Sorry. Um, are you going to discuss that part further, or has that already been uh, approved? Um, it's been proposed, and um, yeah, the board will decide whether we agree with that. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay, um, anybody else wish to speak in opposition or concern to the plan? I have a question. Anybody wishing to speak in favor? Okay, hearing none, I'm gonna go ahead and close the public comment. Um, I'd ask uh, or give the opportunity of the applicant or their representative to um, respond to some of the questions. So, I took a little few notes, but if you might have your own. You can yeah, kind of step through. Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. So, yep. one of the first comments, um, the letter from Mark Rapalgi. Excuse me, I have trouble saying his last name. Sorry. Right. The fire inspector yep. um, it was simply there. There was no comments. It was simply um, assigning the address for the proposed dwelling, 58 Lund Street. I'd be happy to read the five comments that were in in the letter from Joe Mendola. Um, if that's what the board would like. Sure, go ahead. Let's um, just get it out of the way. So, so comment one, the existing sewer service should be shown in the plan. Sewer permit is available for the review to support depicting the service in accordance with historic records. Comment two, there's an existing stockade fence located mostly within the right-of-way, which should be removed or relocated to private property so as not to restrict site distances from driveways. Okay. Comment three, the 22-foot driveway length indication to see note should be more specific. Comment four, sheet three, Note 14 is redundant to note 10. Comment five, for the infiltration device, have test bits been done, should filter fra fabric be specified? What secures in place the infiltration unit cover? Um, I'll, well, real quick, while we're on that subject, yep. the, the proposed roof infiltra infiltration units, there is one proposed for each of the units. It is simply um, one, one of the kind of the easiest ways that, that we've seen for small subdivisions. It's a vertical piece of 24 inch perforated HDPE pipe and with a cover on the top of it in a bed of stone. So to the, to the, the question that was asked earlier, um, the, the runoff will be collected off the roof in gutters, be transported via downspouts into this. It, it essentially functions as, as a, a subsurface dry well. There will be a small plastic cover um, that could get buried under a little bit of loam should the applicant decide or could show as, as any kind of communication subsurface box. And just um, to clarify, that's on the proposed new dwelling and on the existing. That, that is currently proposed on both, cor correct. Okay. Um, the, 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 con the existing driveway north of the existing dwelling, um, it, it's, the, the comment came in about there is, uh, there is concrete there, um, there is a mix. It, it's, it's certainly not a perfect depiction. It's, it's kind of not in great condition. So it's a mix when I, when I kind of had mentioned it's a dirt slash gravel hard pack area. Sometimes we use that, that designation to indicate maybe some broken up pavement with some kind of gravel on top of it that's just kind of accumulated over the years. So not a perfect depiction on the plans, but it, it can be very challenging to accurately depict mixes of, of dirt, hard packed gravel, and existing kind of broken up um, concrete. Um, the, the, the comment about the, the roadway being in moratorium, that is correct. Um, note 21 on sheet one, I believe, speaks to that. Um, speaks to the five-year moratorium. Um, obviously, the, the applicant or, or my client 
will either be able to out, so wait out the, the five years or um, should they decide to go that route, request relief from the Board of Public Works, which is allowed within the, the Nashua um, regulations. Um, you, Mr. Chairman, you had kind of clarified a little bit. It is proposed a, a two-story dwelling with an attached garage. Um, like you had mentioned, this, this is shown just graphically to show that the land can support that. Of course, um, the, the, the cl my client receives, um, could adjust the, it slightly, but only what is allowed within the, the existing setback. That is to say that they couldn't propose, the adjustments couldn't propose a building over a setback without, or any other, um, breaking any other regulation without needing to come back for either zoning or planning relief from such. Um, I think that might be it, Mr. Chairman, unless I missed one. Clarify the driveway construction, the new driveways? Yes, oh, sorry. So so we are proposing, as I had mentioned, we are proposing a new driveway um, for both of, the, both of the lots. One will be in the existing location um, that services ex currently the detached garage. So the proposed new dwelling will be serviced via a, a driveway in the same location and that the aforementioned um, kind of gravel, dirt, hard packed driveway that's servicing the existing dwelling, that area will be kind of ripped up, new gravels will be placed down, and a, a formal paved driveway will be installed in this location to make sure we're providing formal off-street parking, which was something that we had heard at the zoning, um, at the zoning hearing. Some of the abutters had mentioned that the previous tenants were doing a lot of street parking, so it's, it's definitely our intention to try to get the, get the parking onto the, onto the properties. Um, because the room does allow so. Okay. Um, for the board, any any further questions of the update? Alderman Clee. Uh, thank you. It, it was brought up, and I and I know, Mr. Chairman, you did answer the question about the overhead for electric electrical and um, and communication. That already exists within that area, so this isn't going to be unique where everything else is underground and this would be. If, if I'm looking correctly, I, I do see across the street and so on there are telephone poles. Th that right. is correct. We, we are asking for a waiver because underground is required in the land use code, right. but the neighborhood, including the existing dwelling, are currently serviced by overhead power and um, telecommunication utilities. So it would be consistent with the neighborhood. Sorry. That's what I was asking. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right, any other questions by the board for the applicant? Okay, any other questions by the board for staff um, while we're in the hearing? I guess the only thing I'd have, so just clarifying on this um, number nine stipulation, are we still thinking prior to recording the plan is the right approach? Or what is our alternatives? It sounds like there's, there's nothing um, crossing the line anymore, so does it matter? Yeah. I don't think it matters as much. I mean, uh, in terms of uh, recording the plan, we can, we can record it as... So, that, so we, we, could, we could essentially strike nine, is what, right? I think that would be reasonable. The, the yeah. concern is if, if a subdivision is proposed uh, and it is subsequently recorded, if a building was either straddling a line or within a setback, you'd be creating a nonconforming lot. Um, hence the need to demolish before recording. That's not the case here, so I think that we can strike that condition. Yeah, and then of course the zoning, more than one building on a lot and all that, so it has to go come down no matter what. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are comfortable with taking nine off? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, any other questions of staff by the board while we're in the hearing? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close the hearing. Um, thank you. Um, so going into the meeting here, um, seems like a, you know, definitely, I, I mean, I've seen the site, it seems like a definite improvement <laughs> to the site, <laughs> uh, that's to say the least. Um, so that's great. Um, and um, I think the butter questions were excellent, and, um, but it seemed like most of those were being, or they were all being addressed as far as I could see. So I think that's a positive thing as well. Um, anybody have any other comments or discussion points while we're in the meeting here on the board? Hold me, please. Uh, yeah, just a quick comment. I, yeah. I, I agree with you. I think the better questions were um, very good, um, and and I'm glad they were able to get the the documents that they they weren't able to find online. Um, I see no no issue with this. 
the butters did not seem to actually be for or against. They just had questions that needed to be answered. So yeah. I, I don't see an issue from the neighbors or neighborhood to, to not approve this as long as we've met all the, the comments and, and criteria and so on. Um, the, when we, when we do do that, we would, um, cause I just want to make sure that comment number two, that that fence does in the right of way does come down and so on. That would be part of the stipulation that we make within those nine things that we approve, correct? So I'm sorry, the, the staff comment number two, where it says that the stockade fence. Oh, those are in the letter, yeah. They so are in that, the, okay. That's being addressed in essentially stipulation number five. Number five, yeah. okay. And the date for number five is what again? 1130, 2022. 1130. Yeah. And the date for the fire letter is? Is 23rd. the 23rd, yeah. 23rd of November, okay. Okay. Mr. All the, yeah, Mr. Barley. I just have one question for staff. Yep. Um, with respect to the, the sidewalk contribution in lieu, I just want to make sure that the staff report refers to, uh, I think, a different plan in terms of the frontage. So I just want to make sure the amount is correct, that the $5,700 contribution is, is reflective of the frontage. That's good. Okay. That's correct. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Any other and questions? This is Petra again Sorry. in the neighborhood committee. Sorry, we're um, the public comment is actually closed. So I just want yep. to clarify the assumption of Miss Clay that we were not for or against it. We are actually against it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So you're welcome. Yep. Um, so for the board here, um, does anybody have any further comment or do you want to make a motion? Someone want to make a motion? Mr. Barley? Uh, I would make a motion to approve new business uh, subdivision plan case number 822-0227, uh, owner RIK Construction Services LLC proposed two lot subdivision at 60 Long Road. And uh, that will be with a finding that the, um, the plan does meet the requirements outlined in subdivision arrow section 190-138G. And that will be with a total of uh, eight stipulations. Um, the first three of those are waiver requests. Um, Stipulation number one being a request for a waiver of, from section 190-2829 requiring physical features within 1,000 feet. That will read is granted, will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. Item number two being a request for a waiver of section 190-221C um, with respect to underground utilities. Um, and that will read is granted, will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. Stipulate, or yes, yeah, stipulation number three being a request for a waiver of section 190-212A1 um, requiring a sidewalk on at least one side of the street. Um, that will read is granted, will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation with the understanding that the applicant has agreed to make a contribution in lieu of the construction of sidewalks in the amount, in the amount of $5,700 uh, pursuant to the, the board's authority under section 190-212D2. Uh, stipulation number four so shall read as written in the staff report. Stipulation number five um, 30th. 30th. Uh, will be a, uh, amended to uh, indicate that the date of the, the letter from the engineering department is November 30th, 2022. 23rd. And uh, st stipulation number six shall be revised to indicate that the letter from Mark Rapaglia is dated November 23rd. 2022, stipulation seven and eight to read as written in the staff report, uh, stipulation uh, nine uh, to be removed, and uh, stipulation ten, 10 to be renumbered re nine um, and uh, written uh, to read as written in the staff report. So I apologize, nine stipulations. Not okay. Not eight. All right. All right. So we have that motion to approve A22 0227 with the nine stipulations as stated by Mr. Barth. We have a second. Second by Ms. Harper. 
Any further discussion by the board? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion passes. Thank you very much. All right, um, so we just have a couple other items on our agenda here. We have um, a review for the tentative agenda. I don't know if anybody's had a chance to um, take a look at that tentative agenda at the end of the packet there. I think it's dated, uh, I'll keep going back and forth here, sorry. Yeah. Um, looks like there's three, well, one of them is the one we just, right. actually so only. All three of them are. All three of them are ones that we've seen yeah. on yeah. the sheet here, but anybody want to make a motion? So what is there anything on here? Does it really look like it? Anybody? Ms. Harper? Um, yes, I'd like to make a motion that there are no cases on the tentative agenda with regional impact. All right, so we have that motion by Ms. Harper for there are no cases of regional impact on the tentative agenda. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Varley. Any further discussion by the board? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion passes. All right, um, so nomination, next up is other business nomination committee for new officers for 2023. So generally speaking, um, the process we've done in the past for this is um, one of the board members has usually been bought, but he's not here today. I don't know. We could, since he's not here, we could assign it to him. That's, that's actually no, it's okay. I did it last year. You did it. Oh, that's right. You did it. Yeah. So usually, what we do is um, we, uh, you know, just talk for a minute about the people who might be interested, and then um, Ms. Harper would send around an email that individually to us that would just say, um, you know. Do you have any recommendations for motions of, of who that might be? And then she'll compile them and then come sort of prepared to the first meeting of the year with, here's what I got for input from the board and, um, and present some motions, so, or a motion. So, Alderman Clee. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. it's just point of order and yeah. perhaps staff can, sure. um, when we do that, we're not violating any kind of right to know by yeah, do generally you, the process is we, <laughs> you have to do it individually. That's no, it's yeah. still, um, yeah. we used to, we called it, yeah. uh, pardon me for, yeah. for correcting, yeah. we called it the telephone game. Yeah. Um, I can't call one alderman and have them call another alderman. Correct. Once we get over 50% of each one of us, even if we each only call one alderman, it's considered a, a meeting that was not held publicly yeah. just because of lawsuits and so on that are going on in the city <laughs> I want to make sure that yeah. we're not violating that yeah. so my apologies for putting a monkey wrench into it but no no I, I do have those same concerns yeah well we can do it differently too or everybody I think we're can going just, to have to everybody yeah. can email staff what they think that something. would be best well, we can just do that why don't we just do that if you've got some recommendations for people that you'd like to see um, you know um, Usually we talk about whether some of us are okay. I'm still around here next year. I'm fine. <laughs> if, you know, it's usually more important, like if you don't want to do it and you're in the current role, that you let us know. <laughs> uh, Mr. Peterson, yep. so you're asking me to submit uh, recommendations for chair and vice chair and and secretary. secretary. Yeah, two oh, staff, yeah. <laughs> two staff. You yeah. forgot about me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two staff. Yeah, and then. Uh, yeah, maybe Ms. Harper can collect those from staff and present something and present. At, at the other meeting. So, um, so we'll do it that way. That seems like a reasonable Very approach. Good. Thank you. So will all the other uh, planning board members be aware of this request? Um, I think there's staff only can, Bob. Uh, so so I, I will send out yeah. um, a solicitation yeah. um, to everyone. Um, do not reply all, um, yeah. but respond. BCC um, them. <laughs> that's, that's what I'll do. Yeah. Um, and, uh, <laughs> yes. and then I will contact Ms. Harper uh, with everyone's uh, votes or, or uh, appointments. They're like, yeah, recommendations. And yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll handle that in person at the next meeting. Yep. And Thank I, you. I'll just go around, just Mr. Varley, are you still interested in your role? I'm, I'm still willing okay. to serve. As long as you're willing to serve as chairman, <laughs> I'm willing to serve as yeah, okay. still willing. And Ms. Harper, Ms. Harper, are you still interested in Yes, role? I am still. Okay, so. That's just for input to people, we are still willing if you're interested in this. 
still carrying it. So, Adam, you're willing to do what? Vice chair. To continue to serve <laughs> as vice chair. Okay. Yeah. Not we, swap. Yeah. The only reason I say that, we've definitely had the arm twist in the past to get people to. Uh, <laughs> Not enviable positions. Uh, okay, so that'll be the process, so you can take care of that. Yeah. Um, uh, and the last one here, consideration of instituting a voluntary development team service to interested applicants. Do you want to explain that a little sure. bit? Sure, yeah. uh, I'll be very brief. Um, so this comes from an initiative uh, that the Business and Industrial Development Authority of the city uh, is pursuing uh, called the Developer Friendly Process. And there's been ideas tossed around in some of the bid meetings. Um, this is a process that I'm uh, uh, bringing, hopefully, with me uh, from Concord. Concord had a very similar process where um, it's basically a pre-application meeting. Uh, interested developers or applicants, uh, regardless of what the project is, can come in and speak with a collection of staff, um, anyone who's involved in the project review process. So anyone who would be submitting comments. Uh, in Concord, it involved everyone from assessing to planning, code, building, fire, you know, anyone who's involved in land use and, and land development. Um, basically to give an applicant an opportunity to ask questions, maybe try and flesh out some of any sort of bugs in an application, let's identify variances, any snafus, and, and so that the application uh, will be uh, more complete, uh, cleaner, um, and staff will have it on their radar a little earlier. Uh, so it, it's a huge benefit to the developer or, or a potential applicant uh, to know if what they're talking about is, you know, they could be completely off base and we can tell them and say, you know, you're going to need all these variances. They may opt not to pursue it or, you know, we'll, we'll advise them in their application. Uh, but it also is a benefit to staff uh, knowing what's coming down the pike and uh, but it offers a little bit more opportunity for coordination uh, within the, the staff side of things on, on projects as we as we know what's coming. Uh, so BIDA wanted uh, this to be brought to the planning board just for input, uh, get the board's blessings, um, and then we'll report back to BIDA uh, at their, I believe it's a December 16th meeting. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like a good idea. How does it functionally work? Do you, do you, does that team, like, have, like, Sort of office hours kind of so, thing? So it, it would operate basically as like a standing meeting. Um, okay. And we would offer this, this would be advertised on the city's website. Um, yeah. And they would, you know, someone with a plan can reach out to planning staff and say, hey, I would like to come to, you know, the, the 2 p.m. Uh, slot, you know, so we would, I believe we currently have tech review on, on a one Monday at believe it starts at 2 p.m. Um, basically, we would hold a standing meeting Mondays at 2 p.m. Uh, and if someone wants to come and take a slot, we'll hold the meeting and uh, staff will be there to answer questions, have the discussion. If there is no one there, then we would not have the meeting. Um, but it also offers an opportunity if an applicant does want to come in, we talk, they jump off the Zoom call, staff's all there, say, hey, quick round table, five minutes. Does anyone have any comments on? on questions or projects or whatever so it's just another opportunity to bring staff together for for the coordination yeah all the click thank you I, I love this idea but um, is it uh, mandatory would an applicant have to go through completely this process voluntary it just it's a completely voluntary and it would kind of help them um, kind of like with the SBDC the small business yeah. kind of helps people develop that this will help them with their application so we're not as likely to what um, we just experienced with a previous application have a lot of holes in it. It would uh, it would probably be less stressful for staff as well as for the applicant. Um, that is the hope. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments for on that? It's absolutely. Good. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a good idea. I think anything that can help better inform the applicant before they walk in the door here, because it's kind of like. This is like, it's rough if they come in here and they're not as prepared as they could have been. You know, and it tends to stretch out and mm -hmm. it's just a pain for them. So. I would like to just add one other thing. Um, in, in recent conversations that I've had with you, Mr. Derby, the, um sometimes a, a, a person who's new who doesn't have all these lawyers because they're not as large, they're starting a small business. This would help them to understand the process rather than calling their alderman or somebody and saying, help me do this, just kind of like what I did to you when I called you and said, can you walk me through what the process is? And the biggest thing you said was for them to call planning, but this would actually help them 
with the application sitting in a room going line by line. Again, I, I really do appreciate that. I think it's a great idea. Okay. okay. We basically worked with 66 six Canal Street for the past year to get a plan together. It's been there for 150, 160 years, wherever it was. So to get the plan was a major process, working with Marshall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of a learning experience for them. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right. Is that enough feedback for you? That'll work. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other discussion items for the board? Okay. okay. If not, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'm <laughs> 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 Okay. I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Okay. We have a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. That motion passes. We're adjourned 10.05 p.m. Okay.